Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hello, hello. This is Jake Knight, giving an eye at your service. We're once again back with another stream today. And today, uh, we'll be doing something different, but always has been doing it for a while now, which is legal investigations. Um, we'll be examining YouTube's terms of service. Uh, I hope everyone is ready for that or is interested in that because I know it's weird. Uh, I'm streaming on Twitch, but I'm talking about YouTube. But I will explain just a bit of why that is still important because I would say for us all, for most of us content creators, we do not focus on just one platform making content. Most of us have a couple or several platforms that we post content in as well right the so one of them i would say majority of them would be using youtube as a place to not really to stream sometimes you can stream uh but also to put bod's or put some other types of edited videos in youtube right so it's easy to how do you say easy to say that i think people might find learning about term youtube's terms of service might be useful uh considering it is very important <laughs> very important to know uh certain things at least well i haven't really really gone through the entire agreement but I can tell you that important things would be copyright, of course. Uh, other things would be like what co what type of content you can you can post, uh, who can use the con the, the uh, YouTube services, who can upload what what sort of uh, videos can be uploaded, etc., etc. Hello, Waltz. Hey, congratulations for the first redeem. You're always the first. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I hope everyone is having a good day, a good afternoon, a good evening, a good good night. Because we'll be doing this maybe for a long time. Because reading through an agreement uh, term by term isn't easy, so to speak. Uh, it's e how to say, like just mindlessly read through it, yes, but... I'll be reading through it as well as explaining each terms and conditions whenever possible, uh, what they mean, what they are supposed to do, whether they are uh, from a practical view, from my view at least, whether they are uh, useful or not, or practical or reasonable or unfair, anything like that. Right? So of course, um, I put I put legal investigations as one of the uh, daily streams now, so I do have to uh, how do you say practice my French first. But again, maybe we can look at it as uh, 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 how do you say time for people to gather. Then afterwards, I'll talk about it uh, after practicing the French lesson. Uh, yes. So, in any case, if anyone wants to ask any questions at all, right? Uh, uh, you can ask me right now, no problem. Or if you are worried about like being found out or like for some reason you don't want people to know who you are, why are you asking those questions? I have this link over here where you can go in there, submit your form, and let me know uh, the questions in that way, right? Uh, just in case, I'm gonna look in to the link. Maybe someone has, or someone might not. Uh, some may have, perhaps submitted as a question. But of course not. Of course not. But just well, was just looking to see if there was. In any case. Without further ado, let's just start with the um, Duolingo first. Alright.
All right. Is my hands? Oh wait. My hands are working. <laughs> they are alive. Look at that. My hands. Nice. All right. Let's uh. Let's just do this. Drilling girl. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I was doing this last minute, <laughs> making that banner for tweets. Uh, but in any case, yes, that's that. We're doing a legal investigation. I should have put, put this when I was explaining it. So yeah, we are going to be examining legal document YouTube's terms of service. We have to go through the entire terms and conditions of the contract. And in this seminar, right? We'll be learning about what is important in it and why we have to look into it. All right. No prior legal re experience is required to watch. I try to explain it as simple as possible without using any technical terms or such. And pretty useful knowledge for anyone that uses YouTube. Yeah, it, it can be anyone because it applies to anyone, whoever uses YouTube. Because it's, it is YouTube's terms of service as is such. Not just for content creators, not just for YouTubers, all right? And all related questions are welcomed, okay? Anyhow, let's close that. Close this. And... Yes. We'll be doing this first, of course. Then we'll move on to the actual cross of the stream, all right? So we'll be doing a bit of a warming up first of my vocals. Il ne vient, il ne vient pas des États-Unis. Uh, they are, they, they are not from, they don't come from the United States. No, they come from Canada. Quoi? Quoi? Que? Quand? Quoi? Quoi? Ok. Tes voisins sont dehors. Uh, your neighbors are, are from Rome? Wait. No, your neighbors are. are the Rome? What? Voisin. Your neighbors Voisin sont de, sont are. De. with Rome? Ah. Uh, at Rome, okay. Is it? It's weird. I never. Are uh, from Rome. Are uh, Roman. Rome. Non. Il ne vient, il ne vient pas d'Italie. No, they are. They don't come from Italy. Yeah, I mean, Rome is the capital of Italy. Your neighbors are from Rome. No. De is not from the. Why is it like that? Son de home? Are we with Rome? Are uh, any Rome? Weird. Vienne. 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 Léa et Paul habitent en France, mais elle est italienne. Ils vont souvent en Italie. Paul adore l'Italie. Son Italie. Oh non. Habite à France. Pas. 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 Je ne suis pas italienne. I am not Italian. Non, ils ne sont pas Italian. Ils viennent de France. Ah, uh, they are from France. Okay. If they put Vienne, then I would understand. Yeah, yeah, can say it like that. Je ne parle pas Italian. Elles viennent de France. They um from France. I'm not Italian. Je ne pas Italia. Je ne suis pas Italian. Elle est Italienne. Elle est Italienne. She's Italian. Il ne Pa... Il ne parle 
pa Italia. Yun ni pa Patelian. Why? Yun ni pa Paul. Right, correct. Marie ne parle pas Italian. Marie ne parle pas Italia. Elle est Italian. Elle vient de France. Léa et Paul habitent en France, so, mais elle est Italienne. I'm not Italian. Je ne suis pas Italien. Correct. Correct. Good, good, good. Nous parlons français. Le mari de Valérie est jour. Non, c'est mes garçons. Et... Non, 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 il n'est pas jeune. Quand? 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 Ils sont blancs. Ils sont blancs? They are blonde. Né. 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 Non, nous ne parlons ja pas japonais. Il n'est pas blond. He is not. Oh shit. He is not blonde. Nous venons de France. Bonjour professeur Morel. Je m'appelle Pierre. Mon petit frère Bruno n'est pas à l'école. Il est blond et très jeune. Il est où? Et à l'école. Oui, blond. Le frère de Pierre est... Oh yeah. Elle est blonde. Elle est blonde. Ils sont blancs. Elle n'est pas blonde. Elle n'est pas blanc. Ils sont blancs. Elles sont jeunes. We do not speak Spanish. Ils ne parlent pas espagnol. Nous, oh sh <laughs> Nous ne parlons pas espagnol. Yes, 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 yes. Marie ne parle italien. Nous venons. Uh, des États-Unis. Bonjour, professeur Morel. Blanc. Je m'appelle. We don't speak Ne parlons. Nous. Ne parlons. Hello, how are you? My day today starts with a sour note. Oh, wow. It's. it's that's not good to hear. Do you want to talk about it? Nous ne parlons uh, pas espagnol. I'm, I mean, hmm, myself, other than good wake up as always, I think I'm good today. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> apologies. I was supposed to stream an hour earlier. But always... But the weather around these few months is a bit cool. And, and whenever it's cool, it's very cold in the room and it's very difficult to wake up. Coupled by sleeping late, it's, uh, that's also a problem. But overall, I am good because today's legal investigations. I would like really, uh, how do you say, like to see what we'll find out in YouTube's terms of service. Salut, je m'appelle Thomas. Et toi? Pour, uh, 
Moi, c'est Marc. Quel âge as-tu? Hello, my name is Thomas. And you? Me, I'm Mark. How old are you? 10 ans. 10 ans. 10 years old. A lot of work texts before the start of my work day today. I bought it and got one text from a colleague. A colleague I texted Tuesday, but by just today. And asked about a work on Tuesday. Is it for today? I'm like, so done. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. That's. That's. Two days from. <laughs> okay. I see. Ah. Uh, Goddamn. <laughs> Well, that it that do sound really bad. Like uh, I hope it's not something that is too serious. If it's too serious, my condolences in trying to fix it. Bonjour, Ellen. Hello, Ellen. How old are you? Why do you why do you want to know my age? Je du sang. Right. I'm 12 years old. Qui? 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 Tu es jeune. Tu as 13 ans. Tu étudies le français. Tu veux voyager en France. 13 ans. 13 years old. Charlotte? À tu 11 ans. A mieux que âge. Tu as 11 ans. A mieux que âge. Quel âge as tu? You are 11 years old. Emil, how old are you? Salut Marc, je m'appelle Caroline. J'ai 11 ans. Et toi, tu as 11 ans aussi? 11 ans. Attends, 12. Ouais. Salut Marc, je m'appelle Caroline. J'ai 11 ans. Et toi, tu as 11 ans aussi? Ah non, 12. Oh, 12. Ok, ok. Il a 12 ans. Uh, he is 12 years old. 11, 12. 11, 12. Il a 13 ans. He a 13 ans. He is 13 years old. 12, 13. 12, 13. Il a 11 ans. Uh, he is 11 years old. I'm 13 years old. Je j'ai 13 ans. Paris. Quel âge as-tu? J'ai 13 ans. Je 13 ans. Are you 11 years old? Tu as 11 ans. Tu as 11 ans. They are twelve. They are twelve years old. You sont deux ans. Salut Marc, je m'appelle Caroline. Ah, deux ans. Good, good, perfect, perfect. One more. Quin. 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 13, 14, and 15. Ont-ils? Ont-ils? Ont Je peux venir au travail à toi? Tu viens? I can come to work. And you? Are you coming? Ils sont brûlants. Moi, je m'appelle Marc. Mon frère s'appelle Yann. Il est brun et il a 14 ans. Moi, je suis blond. Moi, je suis blond. Moi, je m'appelle Marc. Mon frère s'appelle Yann. Il est brun et il a 14 ans. Sont différents. Je suis blond. Marc et ma Marc et his brother is different. Marie est brune. Marie est brune. L Je veux parler anglais. I want to speak English. Je veux parler anglais. He is darker. You are brun. 
Je n'ai pas 15 ans. I am not 14, eh, 15 years old. Je veux parler français. Je veux parler français. I'm gonna chill today. Don't want to work too hard. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is the way, I guess. I want to speak English. Uh, je parle. Uh, je vous parle. Parle anglais. Oops. Alice et vous. Je ne venir. Oh, je ne. Je. Je ne peux. Je ne peux pas venir. Je ne peux pas venir. Je ne peux pas venir. I cannot come. Uh, you. Son. You son. Quatre. Quatorze. Ah. Je ne suis. Je ne. Je ne. I have no idea. How do you say this? Ka. Ka to. Ka to. Uh. On. Cons. <laughs> Sorry. Cons. Je ne. Oh. Je ne pas. Alright. Je. Ne ba cans on Kanzon Je ne pas Kanzon I'm not fifteen years old Alright I've learned one ingot Right Duolingo is over let's start with the actual crust of the thing okay Let's do this. Changed the category now. I'm moving on to the actual thing that we have to learn now. Okay, so. How do I start this? <clears throat> Alright. I hope everyone's ready. Because I'm not. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be learning YouTube's term of service, alright? So if anyone wants to ask anything, what's terms of service, right? What is YouTube's term of service? Well, to put it simply, it's basically a legal document that is applicable to anyone, right? Applicable to anyone that uh, uses uh, uses YouTube, uh, but, but we'll see that. They will explain. I would say the a uh, proper document will explain everything about what I'm going to like briefing you all about. Right. YouTube POS applicable to anyone that uses the platform, the website. Right? What's in this, and also compared to Twitch's terms of service, they really, really, I don't want to say dumb it down, but they really hold your hand <laughs> Hold your hand in explaining this to you as layman as possible, as to an average person as possible. The, the way they have uh, structured this uh, agreement is very, very different from, uh, from other documents. Because, you know, from uh, for a starter, they have this like uh, table. Where they tell you what this is for. Like, 
why you should read it and what or what some of the sections are about. Quite interesting, right? Quite interesting. Hello, I make pickles. So I I would say they have uh, how do you say um, compared to Twitch, they are much more they are much more encouraging, I guess. Encouraging to have people read this agreement. <laughs> we made you haven't been practicing on fish. <laughs> yeah uh so this index is designed so over here it says this index is designed to help you understand some of the key updates we've made to our terms of service we hope this serves as a useful guide but please ensure you read the terms in full yeah so this is them explaining to you yeah this is what this agreement is about so technically this isn't the actual terms and conditions this is just the explanation note which is some, not something you will see in an agreement. So, yeah. Welcome to YouTube. This section outlines our relationship with you. It includes a description of the service, defines our agreement, and names your service provider. Yeah. So, <laughs> they're telling you the one who, what this agreement is for, right? It's for. It's a, it's an agreement between you as a user, someone who uses YouTube to watch anything, to upload anything, and be, all of that are you. And the, on the other side is the service provider, the company behind YouTube, right? Not sure what company it is. Maybe it is Google themselves, but not probably. Google is probably the family or the parent company uh, of the. Uh, of YouTube, it's probably uh, like a YouTube incorporator or YouTube limited, uh, limited liability or anything like that, or private limit. Yeah, who may use this service? This section sets out certain requirements for the use of service and defines categories of users. So, really, this is if you want to like have an understanding of how to read a agreement. You should read all this. It's pretty good. Your use of the service. This section explains your rights to use the service and the conditions that apply to your use of the service. It also explains how we make ch changes to the service. Your content and conduct. This section applies to users who provide content to the service. It defines the scope of the permissions that you grant by uploading your content and includes your agreement not to upload anything infringes your own anyone else's rights so this is probably touching on some copyright stuff all right okay that it says infringes on anyone else's rights and because it says your content and contact so it could mean that content we are not sure what content this is but they'll probably explain it in the uh terms itself and conduct most likely means whatever you're doing maybe you're commenting in you in those videos or your uh, chatting messaging in those streamings in those streams so yeah the count suspension and termination this explains how you how you and youtube may terminate this relationship right simple count suspension like banning people and all that stuff about software in the service this section includes details about software of this service hmm? they explain what type of software they allow you to use maybe for to in order to use service other legal terms this section includes our service committed to you it also explains that there are some things we will uh legal investigation in title uh yes it's been cool been cool uh how do you say and then it also explains that there are some things we will not be responsible for right i would say oops this is pretty simple i would say this is like the general terms and conditions here and about this agreement this section includes some further important details about our contract including what to expect we need to make changes to this terms 
which law applies to them. Uh, also additional general legal terms. So we'll go through the entire thing, all right? We'll go through the entire thing now. Okay. Now, so terms of service. January 5th. So I would say maybe this is a norm, but apparently they do date their agreements when they have updated since last updated it. And yeah, so do take note as pre as any other agreement with this date, or I would say any other online agreement that you are constantly using and you might be uh, affected by it. Try to maybe on an annual basis uh, go through briefly on all these agreements, terms and conditions. They might change or may, may, might not change. If they don't have this date, then yeah, make it a habit, sort of an annual habit to go through them, see if anything has changed. But most of the time, if you see this, you can safely assume they haven't changed anything since this date, all right? But quite good, I would say quite a good um, HR approach to things. Uh, like, uh, shows that they are like, mm, yes, if anything you have, if anything you have read from this date onwards, nothing has changed. Should be, right? Should be. Terms of service. Welcome to YouTube, <laughs> right? Uh, weird way to start a uh, start an agreement. Introduction. Thank you for using the YouTube platform and the products, services, and features we make available to you as part of the platform. Collectively, the service. Our service. So they don't really like specify any details but they just in general products services and features and it is considered first service then so anything that is made by youtube for you is considered service right our service the service allows you to discover watch and share videos and other content provides a forum for people to connect inform and inspire others across the globe and acts as a distribution platform for original content creators and advertisers, large and small. All right, uh, we provide lots of information about our products and how to use them in our help center. Among other things, you can find out about YouTube Kids, the YouTube Partner Program, and the YouTube Paid Memberships and Purchases where available. You can also read all about enjoying content on other devices like our television, your games console or Google Home. Right. So this is really the entry point uh, for all other sort of uh, information or sort of uh, uh, legal stuff, legal documents, I would say. Uh, because anything in them where, where they are explaining all these products, all these services and features, it's, it's part and parcel of the agreement, right? Whatever they are providing and whatever they are showing, telling you this, they are mentioning this, not directly, not directly saying them, but they are the services. They are explaining what are the services they are providing, right? And there are other, like more detailed informations in other web, in other pages, like the help center. <laughs> And explaining about YouTube Kids and YouTube Partner Program, which I think I will go through this as well. YouTube Partner Program is basically for Twitch. Uh, if you are comparing to Twitch, it's Twitch affiliates or partners because they do not really have a distinction between affiliates and partners for YouTube. And YouTube paid memberships and purchases. I'm guessing this is like youtube music youtube premium all that stuff you can also read all the, 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 the other devices like your tv i think this is much mm, a bit more technical stuff but technical stuff 
And then next, we're moving on your service provider. The entity providing the service is Google LLC. All right, so they are explaining who, uh, who is the service provider. Google Limited Liability Company or something like that, I think. A company operating under the laws of Delaware, located at... Ooh, wait. Swan 600 Amphitheater Parkway, Mountain View, CA. Wait, where is this? <laughs> I'm actually wondering where this is. This is USA. Let's see it. California? Do they mean... Oh, California. All right, they mean California. All right, all right. So California. Same as Twitch. Same as Twitch, if I recall correctly. References to YouTube's affiliates in this terms means the other companies within the Alphabet Incorporated corporate group now or in the future. Mm -hmm. So affiliates mean doesn't mean Twitch affiliates over here. It's it just means other related companies to Google LLC. All right. Applicable accl applicable terms. Your use of service is subject to these terms the youtube community guidelines and the policy safety and copyright policies which i think i will go through them in a future session as well very important things to note community guidelines policy safety and copyright policies which may be updated from time to time together with this agreement your agreement with us will also include the advertising on youtube policies if you provide advertising or sponsorship to the service or incorporated pay promotions in your content. So it also, this TOS, this summer service, extends to those who you are using YouTube as a platform to advertise, right? Companies that want to advertise their own product. Any other links or references provided in these terms are for informational use only and are not part of the agreement. So, hmm, they're saying that. Any other links or reference providers are for information use and are part of the agreement. This blanket statement, I can't say they can say this because one thing for sure is this is quite vague. Any other links or references providers are for information use. This could mean that Anything else like over here, the YouTube keys or whatever other pages are not considered uh, final or confirmation of anything uh, in regards to what their products are and what their products are supposed to do. So this is a bit iffy. Any other links or references? This, this one is a bit iffy, right? Because I can see that it is in a way they're trying to slightly limit their liability, slightly limit their responsibility in saying certain things that I might not be true. But we'll see. Please read this agreement carefully and make sure you understand it. <laughs> if you do not understand the agreement or do not accept any part of it, then you may not use the service. Right. So I would say this is can it, this sentence actually people don't uh, a normal legal agreement a normal contract people don't actually need to explain this uh, because by law uh, by contractual law whether you understand a terms or conditions or not when you agree on it uh, whether you don't see it when you, whether you don't look at it but if it's been presented to you and told you that you should look through it Especially, especially on a um, online platform like this, like online agreements, they usually put the responsibility on you to read through the terms and conditions. It is impossible, impossible to make sure people have gone through it. So that is why, uh, even if let's say, if we, if this agreement was like given to you in physical form. They don't. Not, they if you if they are telling you you have to agree to the terms and conditions of this agreement to use their service. 
then you have to. You can't be saying, uh, I don't agree to it and still use it. If you are still you are using it, that means you are <laughs> doing something that they they agree for you to do it. And anything that you might have breached, quote unquote, breached their agreement, won't be applicable. All right? If they find out you have you do not agree to their services and you are continuing to use their services, they have the right to stop you from doing it. Uh, which, however, they can. All right. Um, the enforcement part is another bag of worms but i can tell you in real life if let's say you are like buying a house or buying a car they provide you terms and conditions in any form and maybe in a, a thick batch of papers or just a few forms or like that they are agreements if you don't look at them and you just sign whatever they tell you to sign you are bound by the terms and conditions very simple i would say maybe people don't think that is uh, fair but in practical sense it is quite fair quite fair or at least for the people they are just trying to protect themselves right we can't always rely on telling uh, rely on the reason or the excuse that you do not understand the terms and conditions so that when things hit, when shit hits the fan, so to speak, you rely on, I didn't read the agreement, I didn't know about it. Now I want compensation or I, I want to relieve myself of uh, responsibility and so, and so something like that, something like that. You can't, there's no, uh, the th I think there's a Latin phrase to it, I completely forgotten. But it basically says uh, ignorance is not a legal defense or something like that. So just a side information, side information of sorts. So a bit of a different understanding on this thing. But kudos to them, kudos to uh, Google. As they say, yeah, because so Google is the owner of YouTube that they have put in this tell you that if you did not read it, you can't use it, right? When you if you use it, you are assumed to have accepted it, right? Accepted all the terms and conditions of this agreement. Now next, who may use the who may use the service? So, oh, yeah, this is the same as Twitch. Age requirements. You must be at least 13 years old to use service. However, children... Oh, there's an however. However, children of all ages may use the service and YouTube kids where available if enabled by a parent or legal guardian. So, okay. This is different. Different from Twitch. let's read the entire thing permission by parent or guardian if you are considered a minor in your country you represent that you have your parent or guardian's permission to use the service please have them read this agreement with you <laughs> okay i'm not sure i'm not sure minors will understand the terms and conditions given that i think any and all countries uh no but uh, most of their citizens have no understanding of how to read a a legal document so if let's say <laughs> with me <laughs> uh please have this agreement we uh, read this agreement with you yeah i'm that they are not talking about me <laughs> but uh they are talking yes they are trying to say if you're someone who is a minor, consider minor. So maybe someone who is yeah younger than eighteen years old, sixteen years old. Uh, but this means that maybe even a five year old is supposed to read them. Is supposed to have their parents read this agreement to them, which is kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous because there. Uh, I would say another fun fact is that most countries have laws 
pertaining to how you how old you have to be in order to be bound by any contract so if you are a minor chances are most contracts like this uh can be said you are not bound by it but because they are saying you have to a parent or guardian has to agree to it i think yeah i, I have to read the entire thing sorry about that if you are a parent or legal guardian of a minor in your country by allowing your child to use the service you are subject to the terms of this agreement being responsible for your child's activity on the service yeah so instead of like binding a minor which is in most countries it's not possible uh, you can find tools and resources to may help you manage your family's experience on youtube etc etc asia including how to enable a child under the age of 13 to use the service and youtube kids in our help center and through google's family so in most cases where this like sort of platform anyone is not likely to use the service uh, including minors they have this clause to say because they 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 do have family friendly content in their platform that is why they have to put in something like this whether the guardian the parents read these terms of service man uh, <laughs> i think it's very rare very rare let me drink something Oh man, okay. The the throat soaring is coming. <laughs> I can feel it. So this is different from Twitch. Twitch says in Twitch's uh, terms and conditions, they practically say anything anyone who is uh third below 13 can't use Twitch. But anyone between uh, from 13 onwards who are considered minors uh, have to have their legal guardians representing them as well. Uh, another fun fact is if let's say you are applying for affiliate and you are a minor, the affiliate program, the affiliate agreement is bound to the parents or the legal guardians instead, instead of you, right? It's because you can't be a minor and agree to these sort of agreements. Again, because uh, by most countries' laws, a minor can't be legally bound to follow any contracts. With exceptions, of course. Those exceptions would be something like um, anything that is related to medical and uh, studies. Like sponsorship, all that stuff. Those can bind minors. Uh, and then there's like necess ne ne necessities, like food, food, food and drinks and stuff, all that. Businesses, if you are using the service on behalf of a company or organization, oh, this is different. You represent that you have authority to act on behalf of that entity and that such entity accepts this agreement. Yep, it's pretty simple. I don't think there's anything to expand on this. I hope the music isn't too loud. Let me know if the music is too loud, right? So it's uh, music is from Great Ace Attorney. Very good music too. <laughs> Look through legal documents. Your use of the service. Let's move on, all right? Content on the service. The content on the service includes video audio for example music and other sounds graphics photos text such as comments and scripts branding including trade names trademarks service marks or logos interactive features software metrics and other materials whether provided by you youtube or third party so that is what they mean by content everything everyone so it's you or another content creator or youtube or another third party 
anything, everything is considered content in this agreement. Content is the responsibility of the person or entity that provides it to the service. YouTube is under no obligation to host or serve content. If you see any content you believe not, does not apply, comply with this agreement, including by violating the community guidelines or the law, you can report it to us. Right. So they are saying uh, this is uh, content is the responsibility of the person. YouTube is under no obligation to host or serve content. Right. Hmm. How should I read this? There's basically they are trying to say whatever you do on YouTube is your responsibility. And YouTube has no obligation to host or serve content. This is not saying them pretty weird way to word this. They are like saying Mm, no obligation to host your service content. Hmm. For me, I would have worded it differently because it's in a way this they are trying to say they can stop, uh, stop letting you use YouTube, but they don't tell you, uh, when. Meaning to say, at all times, YouTube has no obligation to host or serve your content. Meaning to say, whether you have done anything wrong or not, they have no obligation to host or serve content. Because this sentence, this sentence has no exceptions. Maybe you can try to like, interpret it to say that only if you do not comply with this agreement and violate the community guidelines or the law, then YouTube doesn't have any obligation to host or serve your content. But you can't read that in that way. Personally, I would say that, right? Uh, because they are in separate sentences. Because it doesn't say YouTube is under no obligation to host or serve content. If you... If, because this is not one sentence they have separated it with a uh full stop so pretty kind of sneaky kind of sneaky i would say they would have it like that really really i mean um yeah they came if let's say this comes up this issue comes up and YouTube can pretty much say they have no obligation to host or serve content in whatever reason, for whatever reason or for whatever, uh, how they want to do it. No, there's nothing, nothing about it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward and simple and kind of dangerous. We like that. Or at dangerous at least to content creators. Hey Nixman, morning, morning. Uh, so there's that. Then we have Google accounts and YouTube chats. But before that, they say if you see any content you believe does not comply with this, you can report it to us. Right, I, you can report it to us, but they don't tell you what happens if it has been reported. But I guess it's in a different term, different terms and conditions. Google accounts and YouTube channels. You can use parts of the service, such as browsing and searching for content, without having a Google account. However, you do need a Google account to use some features. With a Google account, you may be able to like videos, subscribe to channels, create your own YouTube channel, and more. You can follow these instructions to create a Google account, okay? Um, this actually is necessary. These two sentences, these three sentences isn't really necessary. They could have just ended here. You can use policies such as da, 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 without having a Google account. But of course, they want to be quote unquote help, helpful to people. And they put it over here, I guess. Telling you, yeah, you can 
uh, these are what you can do, some of the things you can do uh, with Google Account. So this is really not, uh, I wouldn't say a legal term, because it, you say, it put it in a way like this, you may be able to like da 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 da, -da and more. So it doesn't, it's not detailed. It's kind of general, it's kind of vague. Vague terms and conditions is bad for a for an agreement. But for this one, it's basically like it's not an obligation to add for any party to follow to, to, for any parties to follow. It's just an extra thing that YouTube is informing you. Kind of weird. Normally, agreements don't have this sort of a sentences like explaining certain things. But yeah, creating a YouTube channel. Oh, again, there's more of it. Creating a YouTube channel will give you access to additional features and functions, such as uploading videos, making comments, or creating playlists where available. Here are some details about how to create your own YouTube channel. Yep, yep. To protect your Google account, your password, keep your password confidential. You should not reuse your Google account password on third-party applications. Learn more about keeping your Google account secure, including what to do if you've learned of any unauthorized use of your password or Google account. So all this is really unnecessary. Unnecessary in the sense that this doesn't tell you about your obligations or anything. It's just your, for your information only, FYI. Okay. Your information, our privacy policy explains how we treat your personal data and protect your privacy when you use this service. The YouTube Kids Privacy Notice provides additional information about our privacy practices that are specific to YouTube Kids. We will process any. Oops. We will process any audio or audiovisual content uploaded by you to the service in accordance with the YouTube data processing terms, except in cases where you upload such content for personal purposes or household activities. I see. So, this one is a bit controversial, I guess. Whether YouTube uses our data for legal purposes well on paper yes yeah right on paper yes but that's the thing we've seen so many or heard so many news uh about certain <laughs> about certain certain social platforms uh uh leaking info leaking uh have their uh, actual data usage leak out to the public like they are not actually being used for legal purposes they are like used to for um, some illegal I would say or something illegal something that would be unethical uh, like say could be good could be bad man my, my mind is blank right now but uh, I would say not, not 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 my place to comment about <laughs> not my place to comment about but as far as uh, this sort of uh, legal documents are uh, on privacy policy where they talk about what they will use your data for what type of date personal data they would collect from you is should follow their should follow whatever laws they should are drafted in right by right this private privacy policies should be not they 
the most would be they are not going to release information that are like your 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 passwords or your private personal informations like your address your real name or your bank account maybe uh anything like that so you can rest easy for those but the thing is yeah they won't put this information public but what about privately and how private is that right how privately can they use your information like within their company or within their uh, related companies that's a bit iffy that's a bit, bit, bit iffy but enough about it let's move on right permissions and restrictions you may access and use the service as made available to you as long as you comply with this agreement and applicable law you may view or listen to content for your personal non-commercial use you may also show youtube videos through the embeddable youtube player right the following restrictions apply to your use of the service you are not allowed to as access reproduce download i think this is like copyright stuff now access reproduce download distribute and transmit broadcast display sell license alter modify or otherwise use any part of the service or any content except ex expressly authorized by the service or with prior written permission from youtube and if applicable the respective right holders right so this is basically telling you uh you can't use anything from youtube for your non uh, for your commercial use really <laughs> that's pretty much it for anything for your commercial use uh, which is it's a term it's a term whether people follow it not so much <laughs> Um, uh, whether people will follow it, not so much. I mean, prime example would be Twitch, of course, right? Twitch or YouTube themselves, anywhere really, where 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 there are like uh, people can use it for anything, like uh, like for karaoke, like for reaction videos, like for background music, like for uh uh. How do I hmm. instructional videos? I mean, really for anything, for anything, uh, to learn something, then using it in any way that would be construed as commercial use. But yeah, you do have these terms and conditions. You can't, you can't be saying you, you do not know about this. This is pretty, I would say, a very common sense thing. Very common sense thing. Even if we, even if you did not know about this terms and conditions, you probably should know that you're not supposed to use uh, someone else's content without their permission. So I wouldn't want to expand on it unless people want to ask me about copyright stuff. But yeah, basically, basically don't use other people' uh, content. Then we have circumvent, disable, fraudulently engage with, or otherwise interfere with any part of the service or attempt to do any of these things, including security related features or features that prevent or restrict the copying of other use of content, limit the use of service or content. Uh, this is like um fraudulently engage with. This can be, this could mean hacking YouTube or misusing youtube services for example uh recently this year someone pretended to be hmm, pretended to be bungie the company who created halo right who created one of the games they created is halo and then another one is destiny right destiny this guy uh went on a copyright strike spree sort of copyright claim spree 
on all the channels who that were broadcasting anything Halo related. And I think they he managed to uh, copyright claim uh, he, uh, Bungie's own YouTube channel or something like that. Quite kind of ridiculous, but it happened. And that is considered fraudulent, right? You are pretending to be someone and using YouTube service to do this sort of things that quote unquote interfere with other people's content whether they rightfully be, are using that content or not right so there's i think that's more common rather than youtube getting hacked but i would say kind of common as well being hacked you hear a lot of people getting hacked uh because uh hacked into their account deleting their stuff uh or uploading stuff that is very very you know, not in compliance with the yeah, community guidelines or uh tos uh, it has happened it has happened to big black big platforms such as i recall if anyone doesn't know a youtube channel called corridor digital their channel got hacked all their videos were lost i think i'm not sure what's the aftermath of it but i know they have their own website to you so at least they are kind of safe uh, they have a backup plan uh with that but yeah but the, i would say the ultimate point is this is pretty much a useless term right if people are going to be doing this sort of things which is basically wrong, right? Hacking into the system you or pretending to be someone, it's clear cut doing something wrong. So a legal document having these terms and conditions is just for completion completion sake, right? Just to mention everything. All right. Enforcement wise it is not really a thing. When it happens, people when it happens, YouTube has to take actions to resolve the situation so with or without this youtube will do their thing but let's move on access the service using any automated means such as robots botnets or scrapers okay this is again something like hacking except in the case of public search engines in accordance with youtube's robots text file okay with youtube's prior written permission right no need to explain it further don't hack with anything also includes robots or bots collect or harvest any information that might identify a person okay i aka doxing at someone unless permitted by that person or allowed under subsection 3 <laughs> okay weird unless permitted by that person i guess you can dox someone if they allow it all right that's weird. That's weird. Very weird terms to put in. Like, say, you can't collect information unless someone per permits it. Why not just don't permit it? Let people don't even get, provide this sort of a loophole or exception. Use the service to distribute unsolicited. Let me highlight this so that uh, I, I know well, what to to recap about at least the important terms use the service to distribute unsolicited promotional or commercial content or other unwanted or mass solicitations unsolicited promotional commercial content or other unwanted or mass solicitations so this is something like bots as well where go where the bots are where people just go into other people's channel comment or chat promoting whatever they have most likely people who do this is bots uh so nothing to really expand on it i would say cause or encourage any inaccurate measurements of a genuine user engagement with service including by paying people or providing them with incentives to increase a video's views likes or dislikes oh yeah this is pretty normal or to increase the channel subscribers or otherwise manipulate metrics in any manner yeah so follower bots subscriber bots or comment bots or anything like that 
this uh, happens a lot. Uh, people who encourage it or promote it. So is this type of thing you do for fun? Uh, kind of. Uh, kind of for fun and for educational purposes. If anyone wants to learn the terms and service. Uh, hello, Sigmund. Hello, Sigmund. Oh, sorry, I already done the Duolingo, so sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, as a legal practitioner, uh, well, former legal practitioner, at least I can't do it uh, uh, in a way that how lawyers normally do their work. Right now, I'm more like a educate, uh, legal educator, right? I'm trying to use my platform to teach people certain legal stuff having certain legal skills so one of them one of the things i do is read through legal documents so that people will understand uh or at least have the chance to ask certain things about these sort of documents that are so long so boring people don't would never ever have the interest of looking it up themselves right i've read through the Twitch's terms of service, I read through the entire Twitch's community guidelines, their affiliates, uh, affiliate agreement, their copyright stuff. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting to read them. You learn, you learn a thing or two. Uh, so where am I? Where was I? Yeah, so over here. Uh, oh cause or congratulations i've done this misuse any reporting flagging complaint dispute or appeals process including by making groundless or vexatious of frivolous submissions so this yeah this is something should not be done like uh, mass reporting people making complaints just because you don't like the people, uh, the person. Ninety-nine percent of people don't read the TOS for anything. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's something people don't read. I wouldn't say just terms of service. I would say a lot of things people don't read. A lot of legal documents people don't read. Uh, a lot of people don't read uh, documents, legal documents such as uh, buying a house. A, a sales and purchase agreement of any kind, buying a um, buying a car, buying insurance, paying for taxes, uh, paying uh, uh, renting a house, uh, many other things. Contractual wise, I would say buying games. Subscribing to any sort of services such as Netflix, uh, a lot of those, all those documents, all of those agreements, people don't read, right? But is it good not to read them, right? A lot of things happen really badly. For example, getting sued or getting uh, sued for money or being. Uh, declared as a bankrupt a lot of those happen because you don't read the terms and conditions also wheels like uh trying to make a wheel and all those things there's also terms and conditions so i wouldn't say yeah everyone doesn't read tos so why do this right i'm exactly that is the exact reason why i'm doing it there's so many hardships that people are uh, having because nobody told them what's the importance in reading legal documents. There's so many things they could have prevented themselves from uh, uh, from happening to them if they had some sort of a basic understanding of approaching any legal document and understanding what's important to know, what's, and what's required of it and what's the consequences of it what rights you have when you when you are using any services when you're doing anything when you're agreeing to anything uh another thing another example would be working with someone having a job being an employee or being a freelancer 
uh, an independent contractor. All of that has contracts. All, all of that involves contracts, agreements, right? You, have anyone anyone taught you about employment rights? Have anyone taught you about uh, what is the difference between independent contractors and uh, and an employee? What have anyone told you? What's the risk in not having an employment contract? Like uh, for Americans, I is they are called at wheels, uh, at wheel employees, which is a very very foreign concept for me. <laughs> that people are in actually encouraged to not have uh, employment contracts <laughs> when working for someone and i don't know i've i'm i'm in i'm inside the id either the uh, uh, anti work subreddit or legal advice reddit subreddit i've seen a lot of uh, people going there and telling them i was fired for this this that that reason and the comments in the comments themselves they ask do you have a contract they say they don't have and once they don't have the <laughs> there's not much you can do especially in in the country where everything is about freedom and so that you're free to do anything without any consequences except for very very limited exceptions such as racism, discrimination, all that stuff. So there's so little employment protection uh, in US laws. <laughs> as far as I, I've gone through some of them, it's it's amazing. Uh, it's no wonder, really, no wonder why <laughs> um, uh, US is in a, how do you say, labor, uh, labor, quote unquote, labor shortage, as the employ employers say. So things are like happening at their worst circumstances is because people people do not were not taught at a young age how, what's what laws are applicable to them and why they are important to understand why they have to either follow the laws follow uh, follow the laws and not breach them and what are the consequences of breaching them or etc etc right so what i'm doing right now like reading these terms of service is like trying to give you an understanding of how contracts are made terms of whether it is youtube's terms of service twitter's terms of service or tiktok's terms of service facebook terms of service they are all worded similarly right it's no different from your uh, not so different from your employment contract, not so different from your uh, uh, real estate contracts or anything business uh, trans business transaction or anything like that. They are all somewhat similar in between because they all have a basic uh, con uh, basic terms and condition, basic foundation in how to draft a how to draft an agreement, right? They are just other types of terms and conditions which is specifically catered to their uh content if it's uh if you're buying a house then of course there are a lot more terms and conditions involving the process of buying a house right but everything else in between like uh what the responsibilities are what the consequences are what the anything in between the general law applying to those uh, situation it's all the same it's all the same so yeah uh so moving on all right uh run let's see where were we so over here run contests or through the service that do not comply with youtube's contest policies and guidelines oh so apparently if you make do some sort of contest so this is interesting i don't think twitch has this thing can I be content connected in a way that conflicts in our So what are competitions though? Yeah, so okay. They don't really define what contests mean here. Yeah, they don't really define contests mean here. So 
could be could be giveaways could be giveaways but maybe not maybe not giveaways might be too different contest could literally mean any type of like uh, gaming contest uh sports contest anything like that i would say running contests on true service yeah yeah, yeah. it could be like an art contest like people submit their videos of their art or like uh yeah yeah could be like that use the service to view or listen to content other than for personal non-commercial use for example may not publicly screen videos or stream music from the service right very simple use the service to sell any advertising sponsorships or promotions placed around or within the service or content other than those allowed in the advertising on youtube policy uh such as compliant product placements use the service sell da, 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 allowed in the advertising yeah 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 so this sells advertising da, 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 da. this is this entire sentence is just telling you you can't advertise unless we allow you to do so all right pretty simple no need to really. it's just being very very detailed like they are advertising their sponsorships their promotions anything that is like trying to sit you are trying to sell something trying to promote something trying to promote the product you know on their website then reservation using the service also give you ownership of rights to any aspect of the service including usernames or any other content posted by other YouTubes, by others or YouTube, right? So they are saying, when you use YouTube and you make content on yourself or not, anything, everything other people you other do, everything other people create, is not owned by you. Simply put. Then we have develop and improve and update the service youtube is constantly changing and improving the service as part of its continual evolution we may make modifications or changes to all part of the service this sentence is not necessary <laughs> you don't have to tell us why you are changing your your terms and services such as adding or removing features and functionalities or offering new digital content or service and just containing old ones not really necessary as well we may also need to alter or discontinue service or any part of it in order to make security improvements da, 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 da. i mean let's see the only part that is important is this they can literally just say this they don't have to like specify what All right so this is how you you should be reading these terms and conditions always see what they actually do right when if they do give examples these examples are like just examples can always assume me you can always assume it means anything includes anything examples are just for your references only it's not limited to that sort of uh, examples and they also mention may also need to alter or discontinue the, 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 this one. You could just say this. They don't need to add this part in order to make performance or security improvements, make changes to comply with law or prevent illegal. Da, 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 da. No need to do. No need to say this. <laughs> this is pretty much for your understanding only. These changes may affect all users, some users or even individual users. No need to say this as well. When a service requires or includes downloadable software. Software may op auto update on mod automatically on your device. Subject to your device settings. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. They can, they can say this. They should say this. If we make material changes that ne negatively impact your use of service, we will provide you with the reasonable advance notice. Except in urgent situations such as preventing abuse, it's brought in the 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 legal requirements are addressing security operability issues all 
all of this is necessary yeah they're telling you they might change make changes that you don't like <laughs> they might change make changes you don't like which is like more often than not true uh we also provide you with an opportunity to export your content from your google account using google takeout subject to applicable law and policies what is this export your content from your google account using google takeout is this something like twitch's thing exporting their video VODs to youtube wow i guess it is something your account you're to export a copy of content in your google account to back it up or use it with a service outside of google ah yeah yeah this is something like twitch's export system interesting uh, let me drink oh Okay. Let's continue. Stretch. Ooh, I'll stretch. All right. Good, good. Thank you for that, Sigmund. But yeah, we're like halfway through the agreement already. Not so difficult, right? Not so difficult. It only takes about a few, hour, few hours, really couple hours at max because i'm right right now i'm explaining this so we are taking a bit longer but even even though people more moan about terms and conditions right it's not it's not so technical that you won't understand anything inside of it at all especially with twitch especially with youtube and how they drafted this one it's pretty pretty uh um how do you say Friend, user friendly, user friendly. I'm off to bed, so I figured I'd make you a stretch before I go. Have a good day. All right. Good night, good night, Sigmund. Have a good day. Uh, wait, have a good night. We rest well. All right. See you when I see you. All right. Uploading content. If you have a YouTube channel, you may be able to upload content to the service. You may use your content to promote your business or artistic enterprise. If you choose to upload content, you must not submit to the service any content that does comply disagreement including the youtube community guidelines or the law right simple for example the content you must submit must not include third-party intellectual property such as copyrighted material unless you have permission from the party or otherwise legally entitled to do so yeah you are legally responsible for the content you submit to the service we may use automated systems that analyze your content to help detect infringement abuse such as spam malware and illegal content good Good. So those are things. This is pretty standard, I would say. But we'll we'll look into YouTube's community guideline again. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would say soon, very soon. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's the difference between Twitch's one and YouTube's. Twitch's and YouTube's. We may use how to Yeah, I'm not. Sure. This is very vague, but. Uh, yeah, this is something they don't even have to put in, but I guess they do. But then when they they put in, but didn't really explain what these automated systems are, how they do their stuff, which is a big big problem for YouTube is the transparency in how they handle things, and uh, which is another thing they are they are uh, having a bad reputation of and right now as well because of um, i'm not sure people know about this but basically there's a youtuber who's playing a game called mortuary assistant a horror game and that horror game had some instances of uh things that are very heavy so for that youtuber their video were age restricted and when you age restrict a video it really really reduces the visibility of that um of that video making it perform even much worse so 
there's that right if let's say that was like the same for everyone it would be fine but it's not but apparently it is not enforced consistently or uniformly everywhere and apparently it feels like it is being enforced manually rather than uh automatically either that or it's being automatically enforced but depending on the individual it is what what enforced it depends on it could be depending on the individual because the person have shown a markiplier as an example that he he played mortuary assistant as well but his video was not restricted uh so there was there's there seems to be some sort of bias between youtubers in whatever they upload it so there's a lot of controversy behind that and so it's just a side note side note for you to know what's happening with youtube right now uh so it's it's kind of kind of sad kind of unfortunate kind of depressing that neither twitch or youtube the biggest platforms for streaming or content uh, creation is really doing good for good doing good for for the con for for us for the community right for the for the small community hello natsochi hello hello your avatar reminds me of salt puppy I'm not not know who salt puppy okay is he famous who is it I'm curious now. Let me look it up. This guy on TikTok? Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, is like a fighter or something? Or there's some... He had a boxing game recently. So that's why. Alright, alright. interesting but anyhow let's continue rights you grant you retain ownership rights in your content however we do require you to grant certain rights to youtube and other users of this service as described below so yeah they're telling you the content you create is your own but they are saying uh something like uh they don't really use the right legal terms, I guess. It's, they should have just said copyrights or something like that. So these are the things about the, the copyrights. So license or YouTube. By providing content to service, you grant to YouTube a worldwide, non-exclusive, royalty-free, sub-licensable and transferable license to use content, including to reproduce, distribute, prepare derivative works, and display and perform it in connection with service and YouTube's and its successes and affiliates businesses, including for the purpose of promoting and distributing part of all of the service. License to others. You also grant each other's user for the service a worldwide non-exclusive royalty-free license to access your content through the service and to use that content, including to reproduce, reproduce distribute, prepare, da -da 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 -da. it's all the same thing is other user so okay okay this is as a grant any rights so to a user to make use of your content independent of the service oh to access your content through the service and to use that content group hey this is interesting this is actually interesting But very, very unclear. Very unclear. Right, so for YouTube over here, they are saying whatever you make, whatever you make on YouTube, they can use it. Right? They are saying you transfer the licenses of your content, of your original, original work to them so that they can use it. And the, the way they, they put it is like they can use it for anything. Right? 
use it for anything without uh, paying you. So that's one thing. Very, very unfair. <laughs> But I would say this is the same as for Twitch. Twitch also has this sort of uh, terms and conditions where they say whatever you create on, whatever you stream, whatever you do on Twitch, it is also Twitch's right to use any of your content or in connection with the, 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 the business, including purpose. Or, yeah, the way they word it is anything. You can use it for anything. But one, the other interesting thing is they are saying other people can use it. You also grant each other of the service a world only as enabled by a feature of the service. Oh, okay, such as video playback, such as video playback or embeds. Wait, so for clarity, this license does not grant any rights or permissions for users to make use of your content independent of the service. I need to be sure. What is video playback or embeds? What is playback on YouTube? No times the browser do I start leaving the see. If I understand this correctly, and I think there's no way, other way to understand this, they are saying you can use uh, other people's video however you like, as long as it's, you're using it in YouTube. Implication would mean that you're home, oh, right? Okay, oh my god. They are telling people, uh, they are telling, like, if let's say my channel uh, is being used by another pe person's channel, uh, my videos in my channel is being used by another people, like, say, to do reactionary videos, it's allowed. It's allowed. YouTube is telling uh, their users, their content creators, that they can use each other's videos. And they can edit it, they can modify it, do whatever they want with it. All right, but this is very iffy, very, very, um, I would say gray, a gray area, because YouTube has their copyright system, YouTube has their copyright automated system, whatever, as well as copyright claim system. I understand that I don't think this is applicable for ev everything. I don't think this is applicable for everything. Because just imagine those famous uh, or those like popular music videos. If you can you, ah, use it for your own channel, what would that mean, right? But uh, you won't be safe from using it. Is what I'm trying to say. You won't be safe in using uh, those popular music videos or any anything like that because you could still be copyright claim. So this is a strange term to put in when you already have a system to prevent people from doing this. Independent of the service. Unless you're saying like you can't uh if let's say you want to use someone else's video, it it has to be through the a feature. So they have a caveat, right? They have a caveat. Oh I'm a sort of a proviso exception, which is this word. I'm gonna highlight this. This is really interesting. But I don't think it is a it's a it's a very common thing. It's probably very rare or only a feature only available for a few people. But it says here only as enabled by a feature of the service. 
such as video playback or embeds. So, if I want to, how the only way I can like try to make it compatible with YouTube's copyright system is to say to is to interpret it interpret this as only if your channel only your channel can somehow using that feature using whatever buttons or it options you have in your channel you can select other people's uh, select other people's videos and broadcast it or upload it or however you want to say it and broadcast it probably in your channel instead of their channel i think that is what they're saying instead of like you uploading like downloading their yeah so that's one thing you, you can't exactly download uh, oh man i'm really i mean i'm not sure you can download videos right you can download videos but it's not a feature for you to re-upload other people's video damn this is really really how do you say sus <laughs> All I can say is, yes, here, YouTube is saying you can use other people's work as long as it's enabled by a feature of the service. But on the other hand, YouTube has their own system, a copyright system, to prevent people from doing this. So there's a clash. But for it not to be clashing, is the only way I can interpret this is that this feature, quote-unquote feature, is very limited it can only be done within within youtube itself only you can't download it and re-upload it is the, the the very basic thing that i understand from this you can't download it and re-upload it in your own channel unless there is a feature of it for you to do so like download it upload it within youtube right or edit other people's video this could also mean oh man i hmm. i'm pretty confused why youtube has this let me let me change the music ah very interesting But yeah, uh, if anything, I won't say this is something that uh, lets you do, lets you, allows you to do what, you, like do reactionary videos without other people's permission. Including reproduce, distribute, prepare derivative works, display and perform it only as enabled by a feature of this service. Or the other interpretation I can see is that YouTube doesn't have this feature enabled. If it's enabled elsewhere, I do not know. I'm not clear whether this is a thing in YouTube or not. Might have to research on this. But other than that, they have this exception, right? For clarity, this license does not include grants any rights or permissions for users to make use of your content independent of the service. So meaning to say, if it doesn't, if it, if you are getting, uh, you are using this content somehow, taking this content outside of YouTube then you can't use it so i would interpret it as if you download youtube videos into your computer into whatever device you have it is considered independent of the service and whatever you do with it trying to upload it back to youtube is considered independent of the service 
you are reproducing the content uh, independent of the service. But I will have to, I still have to say my argument like that is very can be counter argued. Right? People can say the other other the opposite as well. They can always argue that re-uploading you on YouTube is considered part of using the service. Is it a, a service enabled by the feature? Not sure. But one thing's for sure, one thing's for sure, right? You, if you are using other people's content, there is still the possibility, there is still the risk, a very real risk that they will copyright strike you, copyright claim you or whatever, you, or otherwise use their, YouTube will use their automated system to uh, claim your video, alright? So that's that. Damn, this is a roller coaster of a term of a term. I'm only having trouble with this. It's because they have clashing systems. They have clashing uh, copyright terms and conditions, which is mm, I'll have to look into their specifically into their copyright stuff, right? So let's see how they like. Make it not clash. Right, eh, we'll have to move on. Alright, move on. Duration of license. License granted by you continue for a commercially reasonable period of time after you remove or delete your content of the service. You understand and agree, however, that YouTube may retain but not dis display, distribute, or perform server copies of your videos that have been removed or deleted. All right, understandable. So this is basically telling you they these licenses are forever as long as it is stays in YouTube. It is usable by YouTube and other users. Again, no idea how they can do this without having any without suffering any consequences but yeah right to monetize your you grant youtube the right to monetize your content on the service as such monetization may include displaying ads or within content or charging users for a fee of access this agreement does not entitle you to any payments starting june 1st 2021 any payments you may be entitled to receive from YouTube under any other agreement between you and YouTube, including for payments under the YouTube Partner Program, channel memberships, or Super Chat, will be treated as royalties. Okay. Any payments you may be entitled to receive from YouTube under any other agreement between you and YouTube, including, for example, payments under YouTube, da, 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 will be treated as royalties. If required by law, Google will hold taxes from such payments. Okay. The way they word this... Right, so YouTube can monetize your content on the site. So they are saying, you're not monetizing the content. We are, the YouTube is monetizing your content. We are, you are allowing us to make money from your videos, is what they are saying. This agreement does not entitle you to any payments. So they are saying, we can make money from your channel, from your YouTube my video but you can't make money out of it then they added this one to say if you have do if you are entitled to any payment if you are you have rights to any payment right those payments are considered royalties very very peculiar why they why they word it like that right they're saying whatever they pay you 
are considered royalties. They are not, they are telling you, hmm, Twitch doesn't say this. From as far as I can remember, Twitch doesn't say your payment is to be treated as royalties. I wonder now, actually, what Twitch uh, sees our payment, sees the payment to us is considered as. Is it just uh, like a hiring fee of us, or is it royalties? Ah, this is interesting. I have to look into the affiliate agreement, but as far as I remember, they don't say what payment is considered. But what is the implications of uh, declaring the payment to us as royalties? Do you avoid taxes or something? I don't think so, right? Paying royalties. Man, this is... This right to monetize just opened up a can of worms for me. Even though I'm not a YouTube partner, uh, this is something I think I should look into. Look into very much. But yeah. Uh, let's continue. Alright. Removing your content. You may remove your content from service at any time. You may have the option to make a copy of the content before removing it. You must remove your content if you no longer have the rights required by these terms. Right, so very simple. They allow you to remove your content. But of course, YouTube has their server, copy of your video. As they say over here, YouTube may retain server copies of your videos. Why? I do not know. They did not tell you. They do not tell you why they have to have a server uh, copy of it. But it is, I would say, true experience. You will know why, because it is for legal purposes. Uh, for example, if YouTube is involved in some sort of a legal case involving ev evidence that is supposed to be in a channel in a video channel in a youtube channel in a video in a vid in a video that was uploaded in vi in uh, in youtube such as maybe it's an evidence of a criminal act a criminal offense then if that case if that legal case has the court order to force YouTube to provide such evidence, YouTube would have this as a backup, as a proof, as a proof of evidence, right? Uh, I think I'm not being, uh, not being clear, sorry, I'm not being clear. A better word example would be if let's say a YouTuber, right? Let's just say the YouTuber is the offender. He or she or they said something or did something that is considered criminal offense in whatever their country is or whatever country they are in. And the authorities are trying to get evidence. So one way to get those evidence is to download or request a copy of the video, right? So what if the offender deletes the video, right? What if they delete the video? Then would, would, would the video evidence be lost? So this is where this comes in, where the this comes in server copies of your videos why YouTube may retain them is because they might be compelled by the court to provide these copies of the videos that were supposedly to prove the criminal offense so yeah there's that there's that that is one of the reasons really uh, to do it other than that I'm not certain could be for other again 
most likely for other legal purposes. If not criminal, it could be civil, right? Like proving something is true or something is not true. Uh, defamation cases and such is possible as well. Anyhow, let's move on, all right? Removal of content by YouTube. If we reasonably believe that any of your content in breach, in breach of this agreement may cause harm to YouTube or users or third parties, we reserve the right to remove or take down that content in our discretion. We will notify you with the reason for our actions unless we reasonably believe that to do so, A. Would breach the law or the direction of a legal enforcement authority or would otherwise risk legal liability for YouTube or our affiliates. Would compromise an event investigation or the integrity or operation of the service or would cause harm to any user or the third party YouTube or our affiliates. You can learn more about reporting enforcement, including how to appear on the troubleshooting page of our sensor. Yep. So basically, they're telling you they can remove your content. Simple enough. But again, whether they would provide, uh, whether they will provide you a reason. Uh, would they provide a reason is subject to these things whether it would breach the law of this direction of a legal enforcement authority da, 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 or not or compromise an investigation da, 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 da. yeah so meaning say at the end of the day uh, YouTube uh, you is sending you we may give you or don't give you a reason right when we remove your videos very unfair but this is what it is unfair to the content creator at least but you know has youtube ever done anything that is bad that is that seemed unethical for youtubers surely not right surely not <laughs> i'm being sarcastic actually anyhow let's move on Community guideline strikes. Oh, there's this. <laughs> Put over here, okay. YouTube operates a system of strikes in respect of content that violates the YouTube community guidelines. Its strikes comes with, a, with varying restrictions and will result in the permanent removal of your channel from YouTube. A full description of a how a strike affects your channel is available on the community guideline strikes basics page. If you believe that a strike has been issued in error, you may appeal here. If your channel has been restricted due to a strike, you must not use another channel to circumvent these restrictions. Violation of this prohibition is a material breach of this agreement and Google reserves the right to terminate your Google account or your access to all or part of the service. Uh, so that's a bunch of a lot of words uh, repeating strike. But uh, yeah, they're telling you. They're telling you if there are enough strikes. I would say this is the, the sentence you have to be looking at, I guess. Is yeah, enough strikes would mean permanent removal of your channel from YouTube. So it's not just removing your content, right? Your entire channel can be removed just from accumulating of the quote unquote of these strikes. What the strikes are? We'll find out when we are looking into community guidelines. <laughs> All right, community, because I, why I'm saying that is because community guidelines is going to be a huge chunk of legal documents. We have to go through it probably not just in one session like Twitch. Uh, where I had to go use two sessions to go through the entire thing because some certain subjects is their own piece of a legal document. So yeah. If your channel has been restricted due to a strike, you must not use another channel to circumvent these restrictions, of course. 
violation of this prohibition is a material breach of this agreement and Google reserves the right to terminate your Google account or your access to all part of the service. So if let's say you try to circumvent these restrictions, not only you will uh, get, yeah, not only you will get your channel removed, you will also get your Google account terminated, apparently. It's actually quite serious. Because when you make a YouTube account, you have to use a Google account. And uh, if your Google account is using a... Uh, how do you say? I'm not sure how they track this. Because I've never been... I've never breached any of these things. But I'm certain they know... Uh, who you are, unless you provide false information, of course, I guess. But yeah. If you try to circumvent these restrictions by creating another YouTube channel, and if you find out you're, you're using the same name and everything else, just a different channel, then yeah, they will do this. They will terminate your account, Google account. The terminating your Google account just means everything involving Google services. Copyright protection. We provide information to help copyright holders manage their intellectual property online in YouTube Copyright Center. If you believe your copyright has been infringed on the service, please send us a notice. Respond to notice of alleged copyright infringement according to the process in the YouTube Copyright Center, where you can also find information about how to resolve a copyright strike. YouTube policies provide the permission in appropriate circumstances of repeat, repeat infringers' access to service. So. This is like in contradiction to license to others. Not really. Can say in contradiction and can say not in contradiction. Right. You can I don't think I would advise this. I will or suggest or recommend this is if <laughs> trying to use uh this as a as a basis against a copyright strike or copyright claim, all right? Even though they are telling you uh, you can use other users, meaning you can use other YouTube channels' videos uh, to for your own channel, maybe, maybe not. This is so unclear that I can't really tell you whether you can use this as a basis against copyright claims right you can a basis to appeal against or copyright claims so yeah <laughs> I, i'm i'm dumbfounded by that terms why it is there but anyways yeah let's move on account suspension and termination how fun we've reached this stage now so we are talking about you may Terminations by you. You may use stop using this service at any time. Follow this instruction to delete the service from your Google account, which involves closing your YouTube channel and removing your removing your data. You also have the option to download a copy of your data first. So yeah, to actually terminate from this agreement from the terminal service, you can't just stop using the service. You actually have to do things to stop using it. By one of the things is deleting your Google, uh, not Google, uh, YouTube account. So there's that. Don't just stop using. If let's say you don't want to be bothered by YouTube for some, for some reason, and not be bound by the terms of service of YouTube, it has how you have to do it. I guess if someone doesn't want to use YouTube forever and ever, or at least uh, for the time being, right? Because it doesn't say when you terminate, you can't uh, enter back, can't use a service. You can always recreate your account, your YouTube account. Terminations and suspensions by YouTube. YouTube reserves the right to suspend or terminate your Google account or your access to all part of the service. To all or part of the service. If you materially or repeatedly breach this agreement, we are required to do so to comply with the legal requirement or a court order. 
See, we believe there has been conduct that creates or could create liability or harm to any user, other third party YouTube or affiliates. Right. So pretty standard stuff. They are saying they can terminate or suspend you if you breach this agreement. If they are required to do so because of a legal requirement or court order, or believe there has been conduct that creates or could create liability or harm to any user other third party YouTube or affiliates. So, so I would say this is fair if there wasn't this term here. This termination thing would be fair if it didn't have this, alright? Kind of biased, but kind of expected. So they are saying they can terminate your a Google account, however they, however partially or however to what extent they want, if they believe, right? People, I'm, uh, they like to use these words, believe, which is very, very unfair to have. Believe there has been a conduct that creates or could create liability or harm to any user. So. What is liability or harm? Very, very general, very vague, so broad that it could mean anything, right? And not just, they are not just talking about any user, other third party. What's important is they are saying YouTube or our affiliates. Which is uh, the most important thing, right? One way you can interpret this is uh, liability or harm could be their reputation, their finance, the uh, yeah, their reputation or finance or profitability, anything like that, could be considered liability or harm, right? So. I would say, uh, actually, if you like, uh, if you have a big enough platform, right? If you have a big, big enough, uh, I would say, I would say this is more of a consideration, a factor. It's not necessary. Only if you are big enough, then you will be at risk of this. But if any time you try, if you criticize YouTube or their affiliates, right? or anyone or a third party this term would allow them to right outright remove you from, from remove you delete your youtube channel whatever it takes this is super super unfair this is super super biased like if let's uh, uh if let's uh how do you say the thing that I'm doing right now, it's kind of, kind of, sort of a re providing sort of, sort of a criticism to YouTube, right? Also, the things I've said about the the surrounding circumstances are around YouTube. YouTube can interpret this as something that is liable, that could create liability or harm to them. So, and they could use this as a reason to terminate or remove, uh, remove your channel. But, yeah, I'm not sure YouTube has done this, but this is like, uh, they have this power. They have this power. I, I, I've seen top stream, uh, top YouTubers criticize YouTube. They can easily use this term to to terminate them. They can easily do that. Very, 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 ah, uh, very bad. This term is very bad. <laughs> oh man, who drafted this agreement, man? Who drafted these terms of service? Yeah, it's power. It's, it's the how do you say? Prime, prime definition of power, absolute power in giving an absolute power to 
YouTube to do anything to 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 uh how do you say silence dissent silence any sort of uh, bad bad criticisms that YouTube may, might have but practically speaking probably not at least not to their top uh, YouTubers of course they won't try to <laughs> terminate Markiplier or like uh, Jacksepticeye or anyone like that even if they uh, had criticized YouTube openly right publicly uh, but yeah they have this <laughs> Damn, they have this. Oh man. Ah, YouTube, YouTube, why, why? Anyhow, notice for termination or suspension. We will notify you with the reason for termination or suspension by YouTube unless we use a belief that to do so. Blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing. Same thing. So they will either tell you why they deleted your channel or don't. Just. Which is kind of redundant, right? If you want to tell someone why you terminate a person, just tell them. If you don't, don't. Then don't put this, uh, like say, I will tell you, but I won't tell. It's sort of, uh, sort of a sentence. It's really like that sort of sentence. For 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 us, if let's say this is a a, a draft agreement, agreement that is only being drafted and there, it's possible to negotiate this. This is something I would say. Might as well don't put it right. Just say we don't put this. Or either just say you will or you won't. Right? Either you will give provide notice or you won't provide notice. It's kind of redundant as always. Effect of account suspension or termination. If your crew is terminated or your access to the service is restricted, you may continue using certain aspects of the service, such as viewing only without an account and this agreement will continue to apply to such use if you believe your termination or suspension has made an error you can appeal using this form well uh, other than the uh, appeal thing uh, it's pretty useless to say tell tell people that you are uh, you, if you, even if you don't have account you can still continue using Google it's kind of redundant. Anyone without an account can still use Google. But for them to continue complying with the agreement, uh, much harder, much harder to see how this is in any way practical. Right? It, without an account, without any information on you, other than maybe like your IP address, maybe, or something like that. Not certain. I'm not a tech guy. Uh, so quite redundant right there now. I'm pretty sure this isn't this agreement wasn't really made with uh, uh, very very technical information or tech uh, people is not drafted together with people who has technical expertise in this sort of field so that's that But software in the service. So I think this are all we are entering the general term. So I'm gonna like quickly go through all this now. About software in the service. Downloadable software. When a service requires or includes downloadable software, such as the YouTube Studio application, unless that software is governed by additional terms which provide a license. YouTube gives you a personal worldwide royalty free non assignable non exclusive license to use the software provided to you by the YouTube as part of the service. This license is for the sole purpose of enabling you to use and enjoy the benefit of the services provided by the YouTube in the manner permitted by this agreement. You are not allowed to copy, modify, or distribute, sell, or lease any part of the software or the reverse engineer attempt to extract the source code of the software unless laws prohibit these restrictions or you have YouTube's written permission. Open source. Some software used in our service may be offered under an open source license that may make available to you. There may be provisions in an open source license that express override some of these terms, so please be sure to read those licenses. So this is just them saying there are YouTubes, uh, there are apps for mobile, 
mobile apps for YouTube. So they are telling you, if you are using those, you can use them uh, with all these licenses, etc. etc. And you, it is all also the terms and conditions are should be followed the same. You can't modify this app in any way possible or sell this or do anything with it. Pretty standard stuff, really. So, I don't think there's much of a. I'll try to only explain things that, like, you will have. You might have a problem with it. You might see this as unfair, or this might be beneficial to you. Most parts when I do when I don't explain the terms is because they are like trying to provide a definition or whatever something means, like downloadable software. Over here, they are like trying to tell you what you're getting, what you're, uh, what this is all about, what you can use it, and all that stuff. And other than that, there's no s anything like the sort in the realm of consequence, risks, benefits, something like. That. And open source, they're just saying there might be some things that, some like, uh, this is where I'm really uncertain they're talking about open source license meaning say uh in their open source meaning say there are things that are publicly free for people to use in their service things that are like uh maybe codes pro programming codes i have no idea what i'm talking about but there are things that the site the website uses where it is actually used based on an open source, open source license. They do not tell you what this license is, what this open source software is, but they are telling you if you do use them, you are free to use them, which is weird. If you don't tell us what it is and how would we know, right? There may be provisions in open license that some override some of these terms, so please be sure to read those licenses. Yeah, so they're saying these open source licenses have their own terms and conditions. We don't know what this is. I can't really tell you what it is. So, kind of redundant to have this t term here. But of course, maybe people with technical skills in this field would uh, probably find out what this is. So, there's that. They cover this situation. Alright, so we have all this... <laughs> This stupid thing that is all in capital letters. Let me take a drink before I go through this madness. Oh man, I, I need to take a break soon. My throat is not... <laughs> it's getting worse. Alright, other legal terms. So all of these are really general terms. I'm gonna explain them very quickly. I don't have to uh, go through them too, uh, too detailed, but I'm just gonna, based on the the the, the titles of these sentence of these terms, I'll explain them quickly. Right. So warranty disclaimer. Other than expressly stated in this agreement or as required by law, the service is provided as is, and YouTube does not make any specific commitments or warranties about the service. For example, we do not make any warranties, warranties about the content provided through the service, the specific features of the service, or its accuracy, reliability, availability, or ability to meet your needs, or that any content you submit will be accessible to the service. So right over here, they're telling you. Uh, they are telling you two things. Two things. One is they they don't confirm or deny anything that is uh, other uh, that is true or false that is found in YouTube. That's one thing. The other thing they are telling you is whatever service they provide you. They can provide you the shittiest service, or they can provide you the best professional, best quality of service. It's up to them. 
it's up to them. They are not promising you anything at all. They are just telling you we're providing a service. Whether this service you like it or not, it's not our responsibility. We don't care. <laughs> Some, in, in a sense, they are trying to say this. Right? They don't care if their automated system is doing good, their automated uh, corporate system is doing good, their filter system is doing good or not, their algorithms of you having your video being discovered is doing good or not. None of that is their responsibility. But they have that. They do provide that. But they just don't provide you the quality that you might be satisfied with. Really, that's it. That's it. You can't really view that as what is massive. Alright, let's move on. Alright. Uh, another, just want to make a, a small comment. Don't draft your agreements with L, all the sentences in capital letters. It's hard to read. It just makes it ridiculous. Like you're like screaming or like shouting really loud so don't do that if any of you are like drafting an agreement don't do this it doesn't make it more important or anything limitation of liability okay so i don't think i have to read the entire thing all right but suffice to say this is them telling you Anything at all, any sort of a d problem that could cause damage, could cause any sort of uh, problem, issues, uh, consequences to you, is not their fault. They are telling you nothing. None of their representatives, none of their companies will be at fault for any loss, profit, damage, personal injury, uh, mm, reputation, anything like that, they don't, ha they don't have any responsibility. But what I can tell you is, this term is very, uh, the entire thing could be unenforceable. Depending on the country, I, I'm pretty sure US has some good, uh, some good commercial uh, customer rights laws or customer. Uh, pro How do you say that? Customer or, or product or service laws to have a standard of a uh, quality standard of a. Uh, uh, quantity, quality, they have to be good enough, they have to hold some sort of responsibility, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, a lot of these things could be there just to scare you, just to tell you, oh, you can't, we are not responsible for anything, if you lose a million dollars, it's your problem, not my problem. Most likely, this is just to scare people that do not know any any sort of legal do not have any sort of legal knowledge right they could these sort of terms could be voided they could not be applicable they could not be legally enforced when the time comes when you have to like resort to taking legal actions against youtube for whatever reason so that's that right Then there, I think I have to read this or so, it seems to be interesting. To the extent permitted by applicable law, YouTube and affiliates total liability for any claims arising from relating to service limited to the, to the greater of the amount of revenue that YouTube has paid to you from the use of this service in the 12 months period, the applicants in writing to YouTube of the claim and USD 500 US dollars. So they are saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, again, they're saying if they have to pay you, they're only going to pay you within the 12 months and 500 USD, which is whether you want to take it or not. If you take it, you might be uh, accepting this as whatever compensation that they have done. So that's that, right? 
whenever you someone this is actually good advice to or good tip to know is if let's say you think someone has done wrong and you argue with them at the end they are trying to compromise with you right they are trying to offer you some sort of a compensation some monetary compensation some other things some other services if you accept them right if you accept this compensation as a very 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 high chance that means you can't pursue anything further because you you accepted this as pain as as a as a compromise as an agreement not to pursue further legal actions against them so be very careful to accept any of this sort of offer especially maybe when you're doing businesses when you're doing uh when you're working for someone or when someone has uh had an accident with you and they're clearly at fault and they're all this is possible they might offer you something as compensation if you accept them then that would be it but you would you might have gotten more if you try to pursue legal actions but yeah take note of that take note of that all right all right moving on indemnity again this is another thing to say if let's say you you as the user the content creator youtuber or just be someone that's watching youtube you have been sued by someone right and either you have been sued by someone or both you or youtube has been sued by someone youtube is telling you uh you have to defend youtube you have to defend google from any of these legal suits from any of these uh, legal actions taken against YouTube or yourself and all damages all everything that is being claimed you have to bear it again this indemnity clause is subjective is I would say not not enforceable in a lot of situations but uh it's there again to scare people and you have to find out whether this their indemnification is reasonable or not right indemnification really just means uh whatever youtube gets sued and if you're involved you have to pay for whatever youtube is get is getting sued for and that's that right then uh, next will be third-party links. This service may contain links to third-party websites and online services that are not owned or controlled by YouTube. YouTube has no control or over or seems no responsibility for such websites and online services. Be aware when you leave the service, we suggest you read the terms and privacy policy for each third-party website or online service that you visit. So they are telling you uh, they might have other pe other services. Uh, other websites being shown in YouTube and they are not responsible for those sites which I guess is kind of reasonable reasonable and sometimes can be not reasonable but I would say it's not depending on the context really it, it is either very important or very not important at all to have this class to be aware of this class actually then about this agreement, we move on to this one. It's gonna be, if, yeah, gonna be another set of general terms again. Changing this agreement, so we may change this agreement. For example, da, 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 da. so they are saying, yeah, all these terms and conditions is can be updated, can be changed, and they might. They are saying they will provide you notice. But again, uh, they might not. They might not. Except when we launch a new product, no series has prevented ongoing abuse. Da, 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 da. So they may or may not provide you notice of, where, of the agreement changing. But I would say most likely you won't. I have no idea when, 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 when did YouTube's terms of service actually change? I didn't know they actually have a new version this year 
So that's that. So again, make it a habit to check on agreements on an annual basis, all right? On an annual basis. See if anything's changed. Nothing changed, then yeah, you don't have to read it again. But yeah. Then we have continuation of this agreement. If your use of the service ends, the following terms of this agreement will continue to apply to you. Other legal terms about this agreement as the licenses granted by you will continue as this under the duration of license. So they are telling you, even if you stop using uh, YouTube, even if you stop watching YouTube or uploading videos on YouTube, it is still the TOS is still applicable to you, right? unless you remove your channel, delete your account, as mentioned above. Then we have severance. If it turns out any particular term of this agreement is not enforceable for any reason, this will not affect any terms. So yeah, they have this. It's because things like this, they know something can't be enforced. That's why they have the severance clause. Saying that if something it can't be enforced, all the other terms are still valid, are still legal, are still enforceable. That's they're trying to say. Then no waiver. So no waiver, this term, I don't even have to read this completely, but uh, it's really short. So if you fail to comply with this agreement and we do not take immediate action, this does not mean that we are giving up any rights that we may have, such as the right to take action in the future. So yeah, so they're saying if you're doing something wrong, you are breaching this agreement or breaching community guidelines even though they are not taking actions immediate actions against you doesn't mean they can't in the future they can always go back to, uh uh using whatever breach uh whatever actions that you have taken that is considered a breach of an agreement and i don't know suspend you terminate you other or other legal actions really so this is that right if let's say one if in, even if it's like one year five years ten years and uh they have not taken actions then it depends on the your country right there are something called limitations or uh, limitations of actions limitations we need to say some sort of uh, some legal suit, some legal actions has to be taken within a period of time before it becomes um, unenforceable, right? Sometimes when uh, when a, if you have like say a, a breach of a contract, it could be six years. Within six years, you have to take actions, and after six years, you can't anymore. But yeah, depends on your country. This one I can't really give you a specific number really but then again if they don't take immediate action doesn't mean they have yeah see they are impliedly saying or impliedly uh telling you that you're they are okay with your breach right now moving on interpretation in this terms include or including means include <laughs> including but not limited yeah so in any examples we are give are for illustrative purposes so again, very important, and also this is very bad, a very bad way to word things. It is, it is very like a gotcha kind of a kind of term. So here they are telling you whenever they say include, it means including but not limited to, aka very broad, very general. There is no limitations no limitations i repeat no limitations if they give examples they are just examples they are not limited to those examples right so there's that then <laughs> finally governing law all claims arising out of or relating to this terms of service will be governed by california law except california california conflicts of laws rules and will be litigated exclusively in the federal or state courts of Santa Clara County, California, USA. You and YouTube consent to personal jurisdiction in those courts. So, yeah. If let's say we are looking to anything relating to YouTube's terms of service or any other legal documents, we have to look into specifically US law. 
right? US law, California law, or its federal laws uh, surrounding it. They can't really... Um, anything foreign? Uh, we can't really use any foreign laws in, in well, interpreting this agreement. Pretty much it. That is pretty much what it's trying to say. Uh, because, just for your information, if let's say you don't mention this, right? Then it is uh, a can of worms, as they say. Uh, always a can of worms. Open a can of worms. Then we have to look into like case laws to see what are the facts to determine whether this uh, breach, whether this dispute of a contract has to be enforced in what country, etc., etc. Right? If let's say, for example. There is a contract between you and another person, but that person is in a different country. Suffice to say, there will be a disagreement in terms of whether that contract or that agreement has to be enforced based on the laws of the other per party or your country, right? So that's that. Okay. All right. We've finished terms of service. We've finished reading the entire terms of service, which is, I don't know. I feel like this is not as difficult to understand compared to Twitch. Actually, Twitch is a bit more comprehensive, but more technical. The terms are more technical, more. It just looks like more. It looks more like a lawyer drafted it. This this looks more like a, a lawyer drafted it together with some technical expertise as well as HR. Uh, so a mixture of that. So it could be good to have a mixture of people drafting an agreement. But yeah, I would say overall there are some things that are very very blatantly unfair. Very things that uh, we have to take note of uh, but we'll come back we'll, we'll recap those things after lunch break all right i've been speaking non-stop for how long <laughs> i think uh, uh at least two hours plus like that uh which is not bad not bad um, but i have to take a break to rest my throat but i do hope anyone that is listening learned something uh, I'll be if you have no uh, questions I'll immediately go to my lunch now yeah, but if you do have any questions I do have my form here if you want to ask questions you can submit it over there right I'll check it uh, every once in a while I think there's no questions in it but yeah hope you, any of you watching found something useful out of it and you have something that you want to know, something you want to, even if it's not related to this topic of the day, let me know. I'll answer them. I'll get through with you as much as possible, right? Feel free to ask, right? You want to ask about employee employment laws, if you want to ask about uh, family law, maybe, uh, like uh, you want to ask about properties, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert at it. <laughs> uh, you want to ask about copyrights, you want to ask about some sort of civil laws like uh, getting into an accident, uh, negligence like that, or defamation, or is some top uh, popular topic that you want to talk about, like Johnny Depp or something case, which has ended quite a uh, long some time ago, or some sort of a famous criminal case that's going ongoing or some investigations that's ongoing in the US with a certain president with a certain uh, con confidential documents that are being uh, accumulated or taken from this particular president we can talk about any of that right because I have finished this uh, seminar of sorts we have to finish talking about the terms of service but yeah we can even talk about anything that's related to the uh, thing that's happening right now. The uh, things, the things that are changing on Twitch. 
which I think is pretty good to know to understand what's happening for everyone in our community right in our streamers community whether it's the VTuber or non VTuber at all it is affecting everyone what I'm talking about is the removal of the hosting of other channels in Twitch so stay tuned for that alright stay tuned for that but in any case I'll be right back alright I'll be right back Take your lunch, have your meal, have a good rest. I'll be back in maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Alright? Ta-ta. Hello, Jake Like here, gaming lawyer at your service. You might have wondered in life how true are the myths and stereotypes about lawyers. Have movies, TV dramas or games portrayed us accurately? Or you're looking forward to becoming one and not sure how actual lawyers are in the industry? Well, regardless of how much you know, I'm going to give you an unbiased take on the top 10 things people have talked about us and what the actual reality is for lawyers. And as always before I start, I would like to emphasize that information provided in this video is only for education and entertainment purposes. Please seek qualified professionals with a newer perspective of us after this lecture. We're gonna start off with the first and quite arguably the most common, lawyers can't be trusted. You may have heard your family or friends saying that if a lawyer speaks to you in a professional setting, that you're not supposed to trust them. And you're gonna be surprised by my answer, but that's true. Well, partially. There's only one question to ask yourself if you can trust a lawyer. Is he acting on behalf of you? If the answer is yes, lawyers are legally duty bound to do his best to be truthful and honest with you. There's no reason for lawyers to lie to you because they want you to win whatever court case they are assigned or completing whatever legal dealings they have hired to do. Unless if you are afraid of your lawyer committing fraud and disappearing. One of the responsibilities of legal practitioners are holding and transferring money on behalf of you as stakeholders. There's a chance they might abscond with it if it was a large sum, only if the law firm does not have indemnity insurance to refund you of what has been paid by you. So you may reconsider keeping your monies with your law firm as stakeholders is actually safe and secure for you when they offer cheap legal services. Otherwise, if lawyers are speaking to you in a professional manner but is not representing you, by all means you can take whatever they say with a grain of salt. In such a situation, they can definitely not tell the truth or do not provide facts that are detrimental for their own clients. Next, we have also been often accused of manipulating laws to our gains. This statement isn't exactly accurate but still partly true because we don't make the laws, we just use the ones that serve us best. Laws are made by members of a parliament or people that has been given the power to make them. It's for the rest of us to read and understand them. Lawyers are some of the people that are quite critical about wording and intentions of any laws. And since we're acting on behalf of a client, we always try to give legal interpretations that are in favour of them. Moving to number 3, another common belief is that lawyers are paid really well for their work. This is untrue on multiple levels. First you have to know that there are lawyers working as employees and others work as partners or in positions where profit sharing is possible. As long as you are the former, you are likely to be paid salaries around the market rate and it's not going to be very high. Second, only specific fields of legal practice such as litigation and corporate work will earn you big bucks due to the necessity and rarity of decent lawyers to do the legal work. I myself am a lawyer that mostly does conveyancing which is any transactions involving lands and buildings are at the bottom of the barrel in terms of how much money we can expect from this work. Thirdly, a lot of requirements have to be first met to achieve higher pay. It's not just about knowing the law and being good at applying it, but you have to be charismatic so that people trust you. You have to market yourself and get connected with other people in the business so you have a constant source of potential clients. And lastly, devote your entire life for your career. So talking about getting paid well, of course there's the misconception that we're only doing it for the money. Well that's true, not all of us are humanitarians and most definitely choose this as their career path for the financial stability. It also takes a lot of time and money to become one as well. If one is not wealthy in the beginning, most of their income from working are just paying back for the cost of being one. 
lawyers doing it out of passion and justice are actually the minority. On the topic of passion and justice, there's also the overtop dramatization of lawyers that are presented in the entertainment, basically showing them working in lavish offices, shouting in court somehow wins the favor of judges, and entire cases can get done in a few days or weeks. Erase all of that nonsense from your memory. None of that is real. The majority of lawyers' work is tedious and monotonous. Most of the time is spent in the office doing research, drafting documents, or just plain simple clerical work. It is a stressful and thankless job. Lots of deadlines to reach just to satisfy client expectations. And to do that, we have been forced to bypass some procedures, whether ethically and or illegally. Getting to number 6, this one is gonna sound very true since I've been breaking apart what an actual lawyer's life is like. So the frequent saying of lawyers are one of the top careers to have sounds more and more inaccurate. Maybe when there was a time that the profession did not have many people competing for the same and limited number of clients. You could say legal services are often sought out for, but it's the opposite now. People look for either extreme of quality lawyers or cheap lawyers depending on their needs. It's a bygone mentality from the olden times, when practitioners are rare as well as the opportunity to be one as well, due to financial constraints. Relevant to the previous one, to rise up and be the best of the best lawyer is becoming more of a myth now, due to the current aggressive nature and market for legal services. Which is to say it is true, becoming well known and well paid is a hard and arduous journey. Studying and going for law exams is in itself one of the hardest trials to overcome. The course is expensive, getting good grades are essential for fresh graduates or else you get turned down just because of it. And when you finally do work as a lawyer, you need all the social skills to deal with a variety of individuals, from judges, clients, agents, officers, clerks, and other lawyers. Did I mention there's no work-life balance as well? Well, there's some positives about the job. You know how some people believe lawyers can only practice certain areas of law that they specialize? Well, that's untrue. Because once we get our license to represent clients and provide other legal services, there's no limitation as to what we can do. We are only limited by what we have studied and what has been taught by peers of the profession. And there's that portrayal of lawyers having to dress formally or behave in a proper way in court or public. Most bar counsels or court officials require legal practitioners to dress and act in a certain manner when they are in certain public places, such as not dyeing your hair or dressing in a casual fashion as well as not throwing stuff or shouting in court proceedings. But of course, changing eras and societal cultures means that these archaic rules are not often enforced if it does not affect the so-called legal profession's image. And finally, number 10 of myths about lawyers. We're told we are too expensive for normal people to afford. Well, after years of practice, I'm going to say this is true. At least in Malaysia, lawyers generally do charge an exorbitant amount of money for their services depending on who you ask. The only thing I'd like to clarify is that there are two types of legal work which lawyers identify, contentious and non-contentious. Well, the former gets the most flack, actually, because it's basically anything that involves resolving disputes, having the need to negotiate or fight against another party in or outside of court. The sky is the limit for what a lawyer can charge here, since it heavily depends on how reputable, successful, and persuasive a lawyer is. So you probably can guess what non-contentious is. Anything but what was mentioned. They all follow fixed scales of fees to which clients must pay exactly. Drafting, negotiating common or standard agreements or documents, filing documents for legal procedures with companies, government officials, or other legal entities which are required for completion are all non-contentious legal work. Depending on what is to be done, you can expect a mixture of both kinds of legal work. And of course, this is a fact and open secret to everyone. It's actually illegal to give discounts for legal services. Even if it is legal in specific circumstances, it won't be a lot. But the reality is if you don't give sufficient discounts, clients will find someone else who will, or even doing it for free just to get exposure. And that's my top 10 myths about lawyers. Thanks for watching. If you think today's lecture has been insightful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Or you have heard any other things that lawyers are believed to be like, 
please let me know down in the comments. If you would like to help or support me in continuing making this content, you can make donations or become monthly members in Coffee to get exclusive membership perks, which the details can be found at our Discord community server, Light & Co Gaming Aid Center. Link is in the description below. Until next time, be hopeful but stay critical. Hello, Jake Light here, gaming lawyer at your service. You might have wondered in life how true are the myths and stereotypes about lawyers. Have movies, TV dramas or games portrayed us accurately? Or you're looking forward to becoming one and not sure how actual lawyers are in the industry? Well, regardless of how much you know, I'm going to give you an unbiased take on the top 10 things people have talked about us and what the actual reality is for lawyers. And as always before I start, I would like to emphasize that the information provided in this video is only for education and entertainment purposes. Please seek qualified professionals with a newer perspective of us after this lecture. We're gonna start off with the first and quite arguably the most common, lawyers can't be trusted. You may have heard your family or friends saying that if a lawyer speaks to you in a professional setting, that you're not supposed to trust them. And you're going to be surprised by my answer, but that's true. Well, partially. There's only one question to ask yourself if you can trust a lawyer. Is he acting on behalf of you? If the answer is yes, lawyers are legally duty bound to do his best to be truthful and honest with you. There's no reason for lawyers to lie to you because they want you to win whatever court case they are assigned or completing whatever legal dealings they have hired to do. Unless if you are afraid of your lawyer committing fraud and disappearing. One of the responsibilities of legal practitioners are holding and transferring money on behalf of you as stakeholders. There's a chance they might abscond with it if it was a large sum, only if the law firm doesn't have indemnity insurance to refund you of what has been paid by you. So you may reconsider keeping your monies with your law firm as stakeholders is actually safe and secure for you when they offer cheap legal services. Otherwise, if lawyers are speaking to you in a professional manner but is not representing you, by all means you can take whatever they say with a grain of salt. In such a situation, they can definitely not tell the truth or do not provide facts that are detrimental for their own clients. Next, we have also been often accused of manipulating laws to our gains. This statement isn't exactly accurate but still partly true because we don't make the laws, we just use the ones that serve us best. Laws are made by members of a parliament or people that has been given the power to make them. It's for the rest of us to read and understand them. Lawyers are some of the people that are quite critical about wording and intentions of any laws. And since we're acting on behalf of a client, we always try to give legal interpretations that are in favor of them. Moving to number three, another common belief is that lawyers are paid really well for their work. This is untrue on multiple levels. First, you have to know that there are lawyers working as employees and others work as partners or in positions where profit sharing is possible. As long as you are the former, you are likely to be paid salaries around the market rate and it's not going to be very high. Second, only specific fields of legal practice such as litigation and corporate work will earn you big bucks due to the necessity and rarity of decent lawyers to do the legal work. I myself am a lawyer that mostly does conveyancing which is any transactions involving lands and buildings, are at the bottom of the barrel in terms of how much money we can expect from this work. Thirdly, a lot of requirements have to be first met to achieve higher pay. It's not just about knowing the law and being good at applying it, but you have to be charismatic so that people trust you. You have to market yourself and get connected with other people in the business so you have a constant source of potential clients. And lastly, devote your entire life for your career. So talking about getting paid well, of course, there's the misconception that we're only doing it for the money. Well, that's true. Not all of us are humanitarians and most definitely choose this as their career path for the financial stability. It also takes a lot of time and money to become one as well. If one is not wealthy in the beginning, most of their income from working are just paying back for the cost of being one. 
Lawyers doing it out of passion and justice are actually the minority. On the topic of passion and justice, there's also the overtop dramatization of lawyers that are presented in the entertainment, basically showing them working in lavish offices, shouting in court somehow wins the favor of judges, and entire cases can get done in a few days or weeks. Erase all of that nonsense from your memory. None of that is real. The majority of lawyers' work is tedious and monotonous. Most of the time is spent in the office doing research, drafting documents, or just plain simple clerical work. It is a stressful and thankless job. Lots of deadlines to reach just to satisfy client expectations. And to do that, we have been forced to bypass some procedures, whether ethically and or illegally. Getting to number 6, this one is gonna sound very true since I've been breaking apart what an actual lawyer's life is like. So the frequent saying of lawyers are one of the top careers to have sounds more and more inaccurate. Maybe when there was a time that the profession did not have many people competing for the same and limited number of clients. You could say legal services are often sought out for, but it's the opposite now. People look for either extreme of quality lawyers or cheap lawyers, depending on their needs. It's a bygone mentality from the olden times, when practitioners are rare as well as the opportunity to be one as well. Due to financial constraints, relevant to the previous one, to rise up and be the best of the best lawyer is becoming more of a myth now due to the current aggressive nature and market for legal services. Which is to say, it is true. Becoming well-known and well-paid is a hard and arduous journey. Studying and going for law exams is in itself one of the hardest trials to overcome. The course is expensive. Getting good grades are essential for fresh graduates or else you get turned down just because of it. And when you finally do work as a lawyer, you need all the social skills to deal with a variety of individuals from judges, clients, agents, officers, clerks, and other lawyers. Did I mention there's no work-life balance as well? Well, there's some positives about the job. You know how some people believe lawyers can only practice certain areas of law that they specialize? Well, that's untrue. Because once we get our license to represent clients and provide other legal services, there's no limitation as to what we can do. We are only limited by what we have studied and what has been taught by peers of the profession. And there's that portrayal of lawyers having to dress formally or behave in a proper way in court or public. Most bar councils or court officials require legal practitioners to dress and act in a certain manner when they are in certain public places, such as not dyeing your hair or dressing in a casual fashion, as well as not throwing stuff or shouting in court proceedings. But of course, changing eras and societal cultures means that these archaic rules are not often enforced if it does not affect the so-called legal profession's image. And finally, Number 10 of myths about lawyers. We're told we are too expensive for normal people to afford. Well, after years of practice, I'm going to say this is true. At least in Malaysia, lawyers generally do charge an exorbitant amount of money for their services depending on who you ask. The only thing I'd like to clarify is that there are two types of legal work which lawyers identify, contentious and non-contentious. Well, the former gets the most flack, actually, because it's basically anything that involves resolving disputes, having the need to negotiate or fight against another party in or outside of court. The sky is the limit for what a lawyer can charge here, since it heavily depends on how reputable, successful, and persuasive a lawyer is. So you probably can guess what non-contentious is. Anything but what was mentioned. They all follow fixed scales of fees to which clients must pay exactly. Drafting, negotiating common or standard agreements or documents, filing documents for legal procedures with companies, government officials, or other legal entities which are required for completion are all non-contentious legal work. Depending on what is to be done, you can expect a mixture of both kinds of legal work. And of course, this is a fact and open secret to everyone. It's actually illegal to give discounts for legal services. Even if it is legal, in specific circumstances, it won't be a lot. But the reality is if you don't give sufficient discounts, clients will find someone else who will, or even doing it for free just to get exposure. And that's my top 10 myths about lawyers. Thanks for watching. If you think today's lecture has been insightful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Or you have heard any other things that lawyers are believed to be like, 
please let me know down in the comments. If you would like to help or support me in continuing making this content, you can make donations or become monthly members in Coffee to get exclusive membership perks, which the details can be found at our Discord community server, Light and Co. Gaming Aid Center. Link is in the description below. Until next time, be hopeful but stay critical. Hello, Jake Light here, gaming lawyer at your service. You might have wondered in life how true are the myths and stereotypes about lawyers. Have movies, TV dramas, or games portrayed us accurately? Or you're looking forward to becoming one and not sure how actual lawyers are in the industry? Well, regardless of how much you know, I'm going to give you an unbiased take on the top 10 things people have talked about us and what the actual reality is for lawyers. And as always before I start, I would like to emphasize that the information provided in this video is only for education and entertainment purposes. Please seek qualified professionals with a newer perspective of us after this lecture. We're going to start off with the first and quite arguably the most common, lawyers can't be trusted. You may have heard your family or friends saying that if a lawyer speaks to you in a professional setting, that you're not supposed to trust them. And you're going to be surprised by my answer, but that's true. Well, partially. There's only one question to ask yourself if you can trust a lawyer. Is he acting on behalf of you? If the answer is yes, lawyers are legally duty bound to do his best to be truthful and honest with you. There's no reason for lawyers to lie to you because they want you to win whatever court case they are assigned or completing whatever legal dealings they have hired to do. Unless if you are afraid of your lawyer committing fraud and disappearing. One of the responsibilities of legal practitioners are holding and transferring money on behalf of you as stakeholders. There's a chance they might abscond with it if it was a large sum, only if the law firm does not have indemnity insurance to refund you of what has been paid by you. So you may reconsider keeping your monies with your law firm as stakeholders is actually safe and secure for you when they offer cheap legal services. Otherwise, if lawyers are speaking to you in a professional manner but is not representing you, by all means you can take whatever they say with a grain of salt. In such a situation, they can definitely not tell the truth or do not provide facts that are detrimental for their own clients. Next, we have also been often accused of manipulating laws to our gains. This statement isn't exactly accurate but still partly true because we don't make the laws, we just use the ones that serve us best. Laws are made by members of a parliament or people that has been given the power to make them. It's for the rest of us to read and understand them. Lawyers are some of the people that are quite critical about wording and intentions of any laws. And since we're acting on behalf of a client, we always try to give legal interpretations that are in favour of them. Moving to number 3, another common belief is that lawyers are paid really well for their work. This is untrue on multiple levels. First you have to know that there are lawyers working as employees and others work as partners or in positions where profit sharing is possible. As long as you are the former, you are likely to be paid salaries around the market rate and it's not going to be very high. Second, only specific fields of legal practice such as litigation and corporate work will earn you big bucks due to the necessity and rarity of decent lawyers to do the legal work. I myself am a lawyer that mostly does conveyancing which is any transactions involving lands and buildings, are at the bottom of the barrel in terms of how much money we can expect from this work. Thirdly, a lot of requirements have to be first met to achieve higher pay. It's not just about knowing the law and being good at applying it, but you have to be charismatic so that people trust you. You have to market yourself and get connected with other people in the business so you have a constant source of potential clients. And lastly, devote your entire life for your career. So talking about getting paid well, of course, there's the misconception that we're only doing it for the money. Well, that's true. Not all of us are humanitarians and most definitely choose this as their career path for the financial stability. It also takes a lot of time and money to become one as well. If one is not wealthy in the beginning, most of their income from working are just paying back for the cost of being one. 
Lawyers doing it out of passion and justice are actually the minority. On the topic of passion and justice, there's also the overtop dramatization of lawyers that are presented in the entertainment. Basically showing them working in lavish offices, shouting in court somehow wins the favor of judges, and entire cases can get done in a few days or weeks. Erase all of that nonsense from your memory. None of that is real. The majority of lawyers' work is tedious and monotonous. Most of the time is spent in the office doing research, drafting documents, or just plain simple clerical work. It is a stressful and thankless job. Lots of deadlines to reach just to satisfy client expectations. And to do that, we have been forced to bypass some procedures, whether ethically and or illegally. Getting to number six, this one is gonna sound very true since I've been breaking apart what an actual lawyer's life is like. So the frequent saying of lawyers are one of the top careers to have sounds more and more inaccurate. Maybe when there was a time that the profession did not have many people competing for the same and limited number of clients. You could say legal services are often sought out for, but it's the opposite now. People look for either extreme of quality lawyers or cheap lawyers depending on their needs. It's a bygone mentality from the olden times, when practitioners are rare as well as the opportunity to be one as well, due to financial constraints. Relevant to the previous one, to rise up and be the best of the best lawyer is becoming more of a myth now, due to the current aggressive nature and market for legal services. Which is to say, it is true, becoming well-known and well-paid is a hard and arduous journey. Studying and going for law exams is in itself one of the hardest trials to overcome. The course is expensive. Getting good grades are essential for fresh graduates or else you get turned down just because of it. And when you finally do work as a lawyer, you need all the social skills to deal with a variety of individuals, from judges, clients, agents, officers, clerks, and other lawyers. Did I mention there's no work-life balance as well? Well, there's some positives about the job. You know how some people believe lawyers can only practice certain areas of law that they specialize? Well, that's untrue. Because once we get our license to represent clients and provide other legal services, there's no limitation as to what we can do. We are only limited by what we have studied and what has been taught by peers of the profession. And there's that portrayal of lawyers having to dress formally or behave in a proper way in court or public. Most bar councils or court officials require legal practitioners to dress and act in a certain manner when they are in certain public places, such as not dyeing your hair or dressing in a casual fashion, as well as not throwing stuff or shouting in court proceedings. But of course, changing eras and societal cultures means that these archaic rules are not often enforced if it does not affect the so-called legal profession's image. And finally, number 10 of myths about lawyers. We're told we are too expensive for normal people to afford. Well, after years of practice, I'm going to say this is true. At least in Malaysia, lawyers generally do charge an exorbitant amount of money for their services depending on who you ask. The only thing I'd like to clarify is that there are two types of legal work which lawyers identify, contentious and non-contentious. Well, the former gets the most flack, actually, because it's basically anything that involves resolving disputes, having the need to negotiate or fight against another party in or outside of court. The sky is the limit for what a lawyer can charge here, since it heavily depends on how reputable, successful, and persuasive a lawyer is. So you probably can guess what non-contentious is. Anything but what was mentioned. They all follow fixed scales of fees to which clients must pay exactly. Drafting, negotiating common or standard agreements or documents, filing documents for legal procedures with companies, government officials, or other legal entities which are required for completion are all non-contentious legal work. Depending on what is to be done, you can expect a mixture of both kinds of legal work. And of course, this is a fact and open secret to everyone. It's actually illegal to give discounts for legal services. Even if it is legal in specific circumstances, it won't be a lot. But the reality is if you don't give sufficient discounts, clients will find someone else who will, or even doing it for free just to get exposure. And that's my top 10 myths about lawyers. Thanks for watching. If you think today's lecture has been insightful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Or you have heard any other things that lawyers are believed to be like, 
please let me know down in the comments. If you would like to help or support me in continuing making this content, you can make donations or become monthly members in Coffee to get exclusive membership perks, which the details can be found at our Discord community server, Light & Co Gaming Aid Center. Link is in the description below. Until next time, be hopeful but stay critical. Hello, Jake Light here, gaming lawyer at your service. You might have wondered in life how true are the myths and stereotypes about lawyers. Have movies, TV dramas or games portrayed us accurately? Or you're looking forward to becoming one and not sure how actual lawyers are in the industry? Well, regardless of how much you know, I'm going to give you an unbiased take on the top 10 things people have talked about us and what the actual reality is for lawyers. And as always before I start, I would like to emphasize that the information provided in this video is only for education and entertainment purposes. Please seek qualified professionals with a newer perspective of us after this lecture. We're gonna start off with the first and quite arguably the most common, lawyers can't be trusted. You may have heard your family or friends saying that if a lawyer speaks to you in a professional setting, that you're not supposed to trust them. And you're going to be surprised by my answer, but that's true. Well, partially. There's only one question to ask yourself if you can trust a lawyer. Is he acting on behalf of you? If the answer is yes, lawyers are legally duty bound to do his best to be truthful and honest with you. There's no reason for lawyers to lie to you because they want you to win whatever court case they are assigned or completing whatever legal dealings they have hired to do. Unless if you are afraid of your lawyer committing fraud and disappearing. One of the responsibilities of legal practitioners are holding and transferring money on behalf of you as stakeholders. There's a chance they might abscond with it if it was a large sum, only if the law firm does not have indemnity insurance to refund you of what has been paid by you. So you may reconsider keeping your monies with your law firm as stakeholders is actually safe and secure for you when they offer cheap legal services. Otherwise, if lawyers are speaking to you in a professional manner but is not representing you, by all means you can take whatever they say with a grain of salt. In such a situation, they can definitely not tell the truth or do not provide facts that are detrimental for their own clients. Next, we have also been often accused of manipulating laws to our gains. This statement isn't exactly accurate but still partly true because we don't make the laws, we just use the ones that serve us best. Laws are made by members of a parliament or people that has been given the power to make them. It's for the rest of us to read and understand them. Lawyers are some of the people that are quite critical about wording and intentions of any laws. And since we're acting on behalf of a client, we always try to give legal interpretations that are in favor of them. Moving to number three, another common belief is that lawyers are paid really well for their work. This is untrue on multiple levels. First, you have to know that there are lawyers working as employees and others work as partners or in positions where profit sharing is possible. As long as you are the former, you are likely to be paid salaries around the market rate and it's not going to be very high. Second, only specific fields of legal practice such as litigation and corporate work will earn you big bucks due to the necessity and rarity of decent lawyers to do the legal work. I myself am a lawyer that mostly does conveyancing which is any transactions involving lands and buildings, are at the bottom of the barrel in terms of how much money we can expect from this work. Thirdly, a lot of requirements have to be first met to achieve higher pay. It's not just about knowing the- Alright, we're back everyone. Hope we all had a good lunch, a good day, a good rest. I'm full. Sorry about it if you heard that, but I am quite filled and ready to get back on this. As well as an extra discussion about something else, actually. Uh, but we'll go on to that a bit uh, later. But yeah, uh, let's see. Of course, we always look back at if there's any responses. Of course, there isn't. But yeah, no re no questions, All right? I guess I'm pretty good at explaining things. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, that's so sad. Anyways, 
I'm going to recap whatever we have talked about uh, in very brief moments. And then we'll move on to other subjects or any other questions you want to ask. All right. So without further ado, let's do this. Okay. So YouTube's terms of service, right? As usual, people don't read it. <laughs> but there are some things that are, how do you say, good for you to know. But um, yeah, I would say from the, it's always because it's not, I would say, yeah, I mean, very understandable. I, very, I can understand why people don't, people don't read it. It's not often it agreements or contracts or legal documents are not drafted in a way for people to be interested in reading it. It is very structural. It is very uh, point based. There's no, there's no how do you say, climate climatic point or there's no uh, a somber moment or a exciting moment or. A, comedic moment anything like that everything is very serious very professional very cold and nothing excites the mind really but uh, i think it's because we don't know how to read we don't read we have not really been exposed into reading legal documents and how to view it in a more practical sense and practical light Right, or um, how to read it in a way that is very efficient, right? We, I've read through hundreds of uh, legal documents, whether it is contracts or whether it's a forms or whether it's cases or um, uh, laws. They are all very dry, which I thought is unstable. Not everyone likes to read such a thing, but after reading so many of them it becomes you develop some kind of skill for it i would say it is like a legal skill where you can easily identify what sort of terms or what sort of words phrases that are normally or commonly used in all these legal documents okay so we i you see uh we have so without further ado, I'm going to recap this. I'll recap the entire thing. So terms, YouTube term service is drafted in a way that is very, very user friendly or for layman. When I, when I, if, if you don't know what layman is, it's not a, a, a word to, how do you say, shame people who are not lawyers or anything. It's just a term where you refer to people who are not legal practitioners or legal experts and uh, the average person. That's what basically layman is. So, but why I say it's drafted specifically for uh, layman is because they don't really use any of the uh, uh, very technical terms. If you, if you watch me read through Twitch's terms of service, that is a lot more uh, technical, a lot more rigid. But that is actually how uh, you have to word everything. Consider that every terms and conditions is very important. Every word that you say is very important gives either gives a broad interpretation allows sorry allows broad interpretation for it or very narrow interpretation of it, depending on how you word it, right? So, but for for YouTube. There's a lot of uh, sentences where they are just not, they are not about your obligations. They are more like, this is what you can do, you know, maybe you want to try doing it. Or this is recommended for you to do. You can do it or you don't do it. It's fine. So I wouldn't say this is a proper legal agreement, but it's an unique way of drafting a legal document it's to say the least right because i would say <laughs> i wouldn't prefer drafting it is even though it's easier to understand it is not easy to understand in the perspective of knowing what your rights are knowing what you can do what you can't do 
uh, for either party, right? Uh, it's if it's, it's how do you say? It's um man, how it's a mix. This a this English word is in my mind, but I can't form it out from my brain. My brain can't think of it. But in any case, let's not get to uh, absorb into all what that word I'm trying to describe. But what I'm saying is. We should be clear, we should be direct in whenever we draft an agreement, whenever we read through an agreement, it should be direct, it should be clear, it shouldn't be vague, it shouldn't be broad, it should be as specific as possible, as detailed as possible, so that there's no room for different interpretations, alright? If we have different interpretations of a term, it means that it is not sufficient, it's not good enough, and it, the consequences of it is, yes, when there are co conflict, when there are, dis there are dispute, and that dispute involves specific c circumstances, and it just so happens that this term, this condition, this sentence, is worded in a way that it can be interpreted, interpreted in several different ways. And a lot of those interpretation is if they are unreasonable then you have a problem then you have a problem right so that's that or make it to or in the opposite ways uh, not really opposite way what I'm trying to say if it's too broad it can be it can mean anything it can absolutely mean anything and if that if the terms are too broad, it could be very very unfair, right? Like say, if a term is mentioned, like uh, I can use this content for whatever reason, uh, and for and for whatever reason and however I want. If there was a sentence like that, it is so vague so impossible to figure out what it encompasses or doesn't encompass it's practically saying you can do anything and it is legal it's legal to word something as vague as that as such but then do we want to find out whether it can be interpreted or uh, that sort of a vague sentence will be in favor of you or not is not something you should try your luck with, right? Even though let's say there are cases where it is they have decided, courts have decided, judges have decided that sentences if the sentences are worded in a vague way, it should be interpreted to the person that it is not favorable to. So even though there's a presence for this, you shouldn't try to rely on this. This is basically saying, I know this sentence is unfavorable to me, it sucks. I, I know I can fight this in court and I'll just leave it as such. That is a very, very bad way of approaching things, all right? Don't ever, uh, don't ever approach any sort of, any sort of a issue or problem like that. Because we don't want to end up using, wasting our time, wasting our money on this, this type of uh, issue, right? If we can prevent from uh, prevent ourselves from encountering this sort of things, the earlier the better. So, anyways, so this is why the YouTube's term of service is bad and good in their own way. But I would recommend not 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 looking at this and seeing saying that all agreements should be worded like this. No, I'd say it's just because of uh, YouTube's uh, is a really 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 large platform, and there might be reasons why they have to word it this way. But for normal contracts, anything agreements like this, don't take this as a good template, good reference to draft an agreement. Okay. 
So, uh, we have all the basic stuff of a terms of service. And before I even start, I think I will have to, have to add that almost everything, everything you do on the internet, everything you do on the lap, on your PC, on your console, everything at all that involves using a device, using anything digital, there will be a terms of service. There will be a terms of service that you have to agree to. It is a daunting, daunting perspective perspective to look at, right? There's so many of it, and you won't really have any time to look, look at all of it. Which my recommendation is: don't, don't look over it, all of it. There's no reason for you to look all of it, but at least the ones that pose a high risk or pose a very important, a uh, forms a very important part of your life. Uh, that you use very often and it, not just often if it involves uh, some sort of a vi fin finance or some sort of reputation uh, it affects your finance or it re affects your uh, reputation definitely definitely look through them right that is how you should approach life don't just try uh, ignore everything. At least, at least give some legal documents some con consideration when they are important. All right. So everything in here is pretty much standard, except for the way it is worded. Right. We have our introduction telling you what service is meant uh, in this agreement. It's pretty broad, pretty not very really vague. It just encompasses everything that YouTube YouTube makes, does that is for you, pro is provided for you, right? And then we have we talk about uh, who they are, mostly very, a very basic foundation of any uh, agreement is and identifying who are the parties in this agreement who are in related to this who are the people that who are the parties who are the people that have to comply with the terms and conditions right so we have google who is actually the other party the party who owns youtube everything then us which is basically over here who may use the service anyone here right anyone that is us anyone that uses the service is us the other party right this one i highlighted any other links or for references provided in terms are for information use or only are not part of the agreement um i put it i highlight that because it's kind of weird that they are saying the other documents are not binding the other documents are not binding uh except for the ones mentioned here so take note because they mentioned that right it means that if they do, do provide some sort of an article provide some sort of a notice or any sort of guide tutorials anything youtube does give that provide it it uh, it is basically not legal another binding document whatever they are saying in there is persuasive it's uh it's more for your reference for your guidance for your uh information only as they say or emo informational use only so take note of that right so not everything they say is like oh you said it you can't go get back you can't take back take it back or say anything like that you must do what you have said. You know what you do, must do. What you have promised. Anything like that. That is what they are trying to say. At least in relation to the services they provide, right? Because this agreement is terms of service. It only talks about what they provide. Nothing else. What they provide as a service provider, right? 
they so they mention who we are who other persons have to follow who are the people who have to follow this terms of service anyone absolutely anyone from my interpretation it means everyone even if they are younger than 13 years so in a sense that the ones that are responsible for minors uh, using the services is the parent and guardian and in turn the parent and guardian are the ones who should be uh, monitoring or moderating or being careful of what their what their children are doing in YouTube, right? So because even in uh, because a very basic thing for contract laws is minors can't most contracts cannot bind minors, so that is why. There has to be parent or guardian uh, agreeing to this uh, terms of service uh, for minors to be allowed to use the services in YouTube. So that's pretty much that. Other than that, pretty simple. Pretty simple. Then we have the use of the service. Basically tells you what the services are what you can use them for right to upload to watch videos to do anything to make content to do short videos short clips and how you and for some reason they have a, a big chunk of thing talking about how you can use youtube in the terms of service i guess it is to be like uh, user friendly again but then this is an, an obligation. This is just like I'm giving you this extra information, knowledge for your own use, really. You're not obligated to do any of this, which is not common in a uh, in a legal document to say. Then we have your information, the category here, uh, which I don't we haven't really delved into much because uh privacy policy those like whatever youtube whatever google is using or using your personal information for is something i can't really say whether they will follow through because we have to look into how reality works and sometimes uh news have been leaked to say that big companies have uh, not used the personal data or personal information as they should have so this is really uh, just them on the surface telling you that they are abiding to all laws and what they will be using your personal information for. All right. So that's that. Then we have permissions and restrictions. What you can and cannot do while using the services. So the most basic one. Uh, which is it involves copyright right which I highlighted it you cannot you you're supposedly cannot use anything uh, that is not created by you simply put right you cannot access cannot reproduce you cannot download distribute transmit broadcast display sales license out of out of modify or otherwise use any part of a service or any content right you can't use any of the service for your own benefit um service for your own benefit like uh creating a different youtube like youtube 2.0 or something like that more more to that sense and for content you basically you're supposedly not supposed to use any other people's content as made by you right and not be not made by you All right you're not allowed to da -da 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 -da. accept expressly authorized by the service or with prior written permission from youtube and if applicable the respective right holders so supposedly whatever you have to do you still need to take permission do uh, get permission to do right in terms of that everything else here is pretty self-explanatory these are all like doing unethical things doing criminal things which youtube do not allow being uh, doing something that like scamming people uh, f 
com committing fraudulence, committing fraud, sorry, um, robots, uh, using any robots to, like, uh, for your own benefits. Uh, like, uh, still also harvesting other people's information. For some reason, and it has an exception to it, which is if the person allows you to harvest their information. Weird, very weird. Then we have, uh, you can't use this platform for unsolicited distribution, uh, distribution or unsolicited promotion or commercial content or otherwise unwanted or mass solicitations. I think it's basically, basically, this basically means like uh, going around other people's channel to just promoting your product or anything like that. Then we have like trying to increase your views, your subscriptions, your whatever to to uh, manipulate the algorithm of YouTube, like to manipulate your discoverability in order to gain some benefit, I guess. Then there is the you don't you shouldn't be reporting uh, randomly with male with maleficent intent, right? With the wrong with any sort of a uh, intent to harm people, and there's no grounds to your complaints to your reporting. But of course, this is much more towards community guidelines. Violation of community guidelines. We'll talk about that in another day. In another day. And we have running contests. Apparently, YouTube provides policies and guidelines for you to run contests. Which I think about it, this probably is more towards people who upload either art, uh, art, on art competitions or video editing competitions or any or sort of a creative work that can be posted on YouTube to show people to participate in some sort of contest where maybe there's one specific uh, judge on their YouTube channel they are like compiling everything all this and uh, deciding who is the winner or such there has it has happened often it has happened often in YouTube at least Twitch, I think, as well, but more towards using other platforms to advertise that competi competition uh, because it's not really a view, uh, not really doesn't function like video YouTube. Then there is the use the service to view the, 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 the per use the service to view or listen to content other than for personal or commercial use. For example, you may not public screen videos or stream videos from the service, right? Yeah. What they are saying this, it's more, it's more of like say, using YouTube, uh, using YouTube to uh, watch streams at a public area. Meaning to say, you can't use this. You can't put on a TV, put on YouTube videos at a restaurant, at a cafe, at a, anything like that, right? Because of copyright, because of copyright reasons, then we will have the sponsorship, advertising, promotions that has to be only done with the approval of YouTube, right? Because there's policies surrounding it as well. But not sure I should really delve into deep into the policies of advertising on YouTube, because I don't think a lot of uh, people. At least the ones I, I I know, people who watch Twitch or anyone anything like that don't really go to this sort of a place to look for <laughs> uh, advice or reviews or points of views on understanding YouTube's policies on advertising. <laughs> At least that's what I feel. Unless people prove me wrong, right? But in any case, then we have reservation. Uh, this just means uh, when you're using the service, it doesn't mean everyone else's content or YouTube's content or service is owned by you. Everything is still owned by their respective uh, legal owners. Then we have developed, improved, update the service. 
uh, this is basically telling you whatever service they offer is going will change for the better or worse. It'll, they might add in things, they might modify things, they might uh, remove things depending on what the depending on whatever reason they have they, they think just or but for me uh why i highlighted all these things here is because there's a lot of like uh, words or sentences or phrase that is not necessary which is you in an agreement in a legal document in a legal agreement there's no reason to list out the reasons of what you should why you're why you're doing something why what what reason you are doing something because and a, a contract a legal agreement a, a, and is all about knowing your obligations knowing your rights knowing what you have to do all that it most legal documents don't tell you why why they are there as such right for example in laws in any particular law, right, that is drafted, they will tell you what you can do, what is illegal, what is not illegal, what is criminal, what is not criminal, what we have to do, etc., etc. But they never tell you why, why you can do certain things, why you can't do certain things, why it has to be done in this way. Most legal documents, such as law, uh, like uh, uh, statutes regulations rules or whatever orders however you want to call them anything that is considered laws of the land they do not provide a reason for you to do certain things or why why certain things are illegal or not but yeah that is part of the reason why i don't like reading this sort of a agree sort of a agreement because they add in too much words that mean nothing to us, right? We, we as the user, the, the person that is using YouTube service, do not care why you use, why you do certain things. We just want to know if you can do it and when you can, when you will do it, right? So basically, that's why I highlighted it. The ones that actually is of practical value practical value for you to read through right they are saying they can modify the change alter discontinue or if it is if the service is more of a downloadable downloadable software so the software something like youtube app right can be updated automatically Um, whether the material changes neg whether if they make material changes that negatively impact your service uh, whether they will give you a notice or this material that material change that negatively impacts your service but then again this sentence is really not, not necessary because they give an exception to it so they could or could, they would or would not give you a notice for these things. Redundant, redundant, uh, redundant term here. Always make sure when you draft some certain sentences, you don't when you when you say something you want to do, don't on the following sentence say you can't do it or you won't do it. You are you have the right to not do it. It is really redundant to say something like that. It's like saying, I will help you on this uh, problem when I want to. <laughs> yeah, it is exactly like that. This is exactly how it sounds, right? I will l let you know when I'm ready. Something like that. Uh, it's better not just just don't just don't say it just don't say it right gives no practical value it doesn't give us any thing to doesn't really help us any okay 
Then we have content and conduct, right? They're telling you most of this is again telling you what you can do if you're uh, what you can do uh, as part of the service, which I guess is good, right? But you, what sort of YouTube is providing all you this, all of these services, and they are telling you what exactly these services are. So basically, uploading your content is one of the things that you can do, right? They are telling you what you can upload and cannot upload. Mostly concerning copyright stuff, right? Can you upload other people's content? And they are telling you they have a s automated system to make sure you are not doing any sort of uh, infringement, abuse, spam, malware, and illegal content. Then again, I probably talk about this because I highlighted this is because there's controver controversy behind this, whether this automated system, not controversy behind it, whether they, it is automated or not, it's more like there's a very very obvious bias by YouTube in this sort of systems, right? Doesn't apply to everyone equally. But we'll, we'll see why they, 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 can, they are doing that. They're doing that because it's they've put in here they can do it. They have the legal right. They can have the contractual right to do it. They have the contractual right to do these things. Rights you grant. You retain ownership rights in your content. However, we do require you to grant, grant certain rights to certain YouTube channels. So this is all about the licenses. Copyright license, specifically. When you see license, most likely in this type of context, it refers to uh, using giving you permission, giving permission to use certain uh, creative, creative works, such as your content uploaded in YouTube, right? So YouTube is saying they have the, they have the license to use whatever content you post up on YouTube, right? Pretty simple. It's the same as Twitch. Twitch also has this something like this to say that they can use your content for their own purposes, right? And we learn that whenever they say including, right? Whenever they say including, it means it is not limited. There is no limitations to what they can use your content for. This is just a, a, a illustration purposes. So. But a, a very, very contradictory thing and I would say a very, very controversial thing that they put here is that they are saying they are allowing people same age as you, you whether you're a content creator or you're just a viewer as long as you have account have an account on youtube you are supposed to be able to uh, reproduce distribute prepare derivative works display and perform content made by you which is weird, very, very weird. But it put it uh, to say only enabled by the feature of the service. And only if you are not using anything that is independent of the service. So what they are trying to say is you can use other people as a YouTuber or someone who uses YouTube. You can use other people's content in YouTube as long as the service provides, as long as the service enables you to be able to do that, which is very vague, right? Even even let's say you won't be editing this, you if you got other people, if you somehow obtained other people's content, and you don't use it with like say Adobe Premiere or anything to edit their videos or anything like that. And just straight up we upload their videos into your own channel would that mean it is would that be considered a feature of the service you can right we cannot argue both ways we can argue that it is you can download videos uh on youtube and re-upload them on your own channel 
is that considered a feature of the service or because you've doesn't entirely the file the video file doesn't entirely go through from youtube's location uh, from point a to point b all within youtube's uh service or you can interpret it another way of saying it is uh because both times when it appeared in in youtube it is the same so meaning to say you can re at least from what i understand use you can do it by re reproducing distributing or preparing you can do all this you can really literally do all this as long as youtube allows it as long as youtube can do it right reproduce can literally mean just downloading downloading it with youtube if it's a possibility i i think it's you can do that right you can download videos from youtube and upload videos on youtube and you can also edit videos on youtube uh because youtube provides some very basic functions functions of a very basic editing functions so weird very weird even though it contradicts all other uh the above terms here like here yes here it says you're not allowed right unless you got the permission here it says you already grant <laughs> you already grant uh then license to use your content so meaning to say by by de by definition by because of this agreement my per written permission has already been granted for people to use my content so meaning to say yeah i can i can interpret this as re written permission doesn't have to be like an other document for me to give my permission. I already give my permission, written permission here, over here, because it says you also grant each other use of the service. None is good, da, 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 license to access your content through the service and to use that content da, 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 for these things. This is. So I basically told people I can. I'm letting people use it. Right. Unless you're saying, uh, well, un unless you can, argue, there's one other way you can argue is, well, on, on over here, it not it not only requires rights holders' permission, it also requires YouTube's permission. So you might be able to just say, although I've granted YouTube. Uh, although I granted other people to use my content, I have not. The, YouTube has not allowed those people to use my content, which means that I don't know. If I I I guess that's the only way to interpret this without contradicting each other. That's the important thing. If you find there's there are terms and conditions that could be like contradicting each other, it means it's not properly drafted. Very pro uh, properly drafted. If there are clashing terms and conditions, it is gonna be a headache to decide which one should be applicable. Right. Then of course, there's that. Right. I don't want to. Stay there for too long. I know it, it makes my head explode, but let's move on, right? Then we have duration of license, meaning to say both YouTube and anyone else would have that above mentioned license forever until you delete them, remove them from your channel. But YouTube will retain a server copy of your videos. They didn't say why this time, really. Every other single time they mentioned 
reasons, right? But they don't mention why here. They don't mention why here. So it's kind of... Kind of unfair, right? Certain things you tell people why you're doing this and that. And certain things you're not telling people why you're doing this and that. So if you want to be in one stance, make it so everything has a reason, right? If you don't want to have everything have no reasons. Do not provide a reason for whatever you want to do or not do, alright? This is the problem I can see with this agreement. Maybe I'm a bit, bit too picky, maybe, but for for our purposes of understanding agreement, make sure it is good to make everything consistent, simple, straightforward, clear cut, no bullshit in between. Right. Then we have right to monetize. This is basically YouTube telling you, uh. Whatever you make for YouTube, YouTube can make money out of it. And they don't have obligation to pay you anything from that uh, revenue. From the money they from the money they make, alright? Unless you're like a YouTube partner program. Which interesting interestingly enough, they are treating any payment to you as a content creator. Uh, treating all this payment as royalties. Meaning to say they are paying for the content that they are using from you. Pretty weird, pretty weird. But yeah, I'm not sure the implications of this treating royal treating your payment, YouTube paying you, uh, whether this will affect taxes or not. Maybe a big maybe. I'm not really fluent in tax laws well have to look into that actually whether royalties is something uh, like a different category of income or something like that so it is subjected to different rates of tax that is something to consider then we have removing your content they're telling you, you can remove your content if you like to right then they're also removal of content by YouTube. YouTube is telling you they have all they can remove your content. They can remove your videos. If you are breaching the agreement, if you cause harm to YouTube users or third parties, uh or the yeah or so this this is another thing. I think I should highlight this. May cause harm. Again, a uh, very, very biased, unfair thing for you to put, to put in. Is telling people, I will take actions against you if you try to harm me. And it, they do not define what harm here is. Right? How are... How are videos harming YouTube? The only practical sense is it is uh, harming its reputation or harming its uh, profit for profitability uh, of uh, you of their platform, of their services, or of their community. Anything really when we, when you just say harm. May cause harm to YouTube, right? Of, of course, they could, it should it should also include like mis misinformation, harassment, all that stuff. But again, harming YouTube, a company. How would someone harm a company, right? We have to consider that in that sort of context. A company a company would be only be harmed if, let's say, we are spreading. Uh, either rumors or truths about a company that would cause financial harm or reputational harm to them so there's that then we have community guideline strikes 
right? So same with Twitch. They have community guidelines and you violate them. They are supposed to strike you, right? Supposed to uh, make your channel, restrict your channel for various things. So they say each strike comes with varying restrictions and may result in the permanent removal of your channel from YouTube. They do not really say what sort of strikes, but probably, yeah, they have a another page for it so they they talk about what other strikes are and what it will have what what happens when you do get them but we'll talk talk about about that together with community guidelines because it's really the community guidelines right so that's that then we have copyright protection Which means that which is about yeah this is about more towards people who have like want to protect their copyright works copyrighted works people who create their own stuff wants to make sure people are not using it for their own personal or non personal use or commercial or non commercial use this is them telling you we provide such a service as well we provide a service for you to. Let us, uh, let us know who are, who are the ones that are infringing your copyrights. Yeah, simple enough. And we have account suspension and termination. They're telling you when you can terminate, how you can terminate, when YouTube can terminate or suspend you, which is another very, very biased term, very unfair term, because they say they can terminate you if they, if you create liability or harm uh, any user other third party YouTube or our affiliates as long as they put something like that they have all the power they have all the money cash in their hand is that how you use the phrase no you probably not to do whatever they want right if they don't like you for some reason they can always use this to just straight up terminate you. Right. Then we have notice of termination or suspension. Again, a useless term because they say they will notify you and on and the next sentence they say only if we feel like it or only if we think that you you should know. Something like that. Or if we can't let you know. <laughs> so again, not nearly necessary. Unless maybe this is some because of a uh, US law, federal law in the United States. It requires them to put such a term in their contracts. Otherwise, I'm not, I have no idea why they have to put this in. It, and what did it like this, right? effect of account suspension or termination yep this is just telling you if you don't have an account you can still use google but you are you are still obligated to follow the tos even though you don't have account anything which is weird again very weird it's like uh, if you don't have an account how are people going to know you exist and you are watching youtube right it's impossible, at least through the normal means. About software in the service, I think... I think I don't have to really explain this. Open source, and I just recently explained this, I think it's good already. These are all standard terms you, can, you will find in all types of agreements, right? The limitation of liability, the warranty disclaimer, the indemnity clauses, third party links, maybe not this, but it's just them telling you they are not responsible if you are clicking through using through other third party websites or online services. Then we have this about this agreement. They are saying they can change this agreement. They can change this agreement. 
a change and they provide reasons for it but it's really kind of uh they don't even need to say this really and if we materially change this we'll provide you with notice again with the notice it's like i'll give you a notice when i can so it's not obligatory it is a very up to their discretion to give you a notice or not then we have the continuation of this agreement if your if your use of the service ends the following terms of the agreement will continue to apply you other legal terms about this agreement and licenses granted by you will continue as described under duration of license yeah so they are telling you even if you stop using the service right not saying you deleted your account or anything you're just stopping you're not watching youtube you're not uploading videos on youtube all of this is still for applies to you all of these terms is still applicable to you that's what they are trying to say and severance they are saying if there are parts of the agreement that is not enforceable for whatever reason the other terms will not be affected the other terms will continue to have legal validity 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 no waiver uh, if youtube or uh i think there's more just to youtube it doesn't say and it doesn't refer to us as the users so for youtube if you do something if you breach the agreement and youtube doesn't take any immediate action you're still considered breach oh sorry man excuse me a burp just tried to come out of my mouth uh, suddenly but yeah they're so telling you they reserve the right to do to take legal actions against you for that breach of an agreement for of a breach of this agreement. And interpretation, the another very biased unfair term they put in to say is include uh, means that it is not limited to, which is to say whenever they give examples, it is not just those examples. It is anything they have not mentioned so literally everything so in providing as they say providing example is just for illustrative purposes it's just to waste your time <laughs> as I, I would interpret it waste my time reading them governing law all claims are arising out of the, the, the so yeah and they ended it with saying if this agreement were to be enforced one way or another all of it should be all legal actions or anything should be taken based on Californian laws as well as the federal laws of the United States. So that's that. So I've recapped the entire thing. Hope that was quicker than I thought, but I like to try and finish up on anything try to close up any loose ends on this live seminar so that's it that's it Oof. nice okay finish one huge legal illegal agreement so now if you have no questions oh it's fine if you have questions you can ask them now all right i'm gonna stretch a bit rest a bit and maybe talk a bit of something else all right I'm running out of juice. Can I still eat this fish? Maybe. Not rotten. I seriously can't tell. And I seriously don't want to risk it. <laughs> Alright, don't eat the fisherman that's been on the table for several weeks. <laughs> Anyhow.
So let me see, check again. Uh, any questions? Oh, there is none. All right, then let's move on. <laughs> let's move on, shall we? So just a bit on something else, all right? Recently, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitch, we're talking about Twitch now, right? Uh, announced something called that they are... I think they didn't tweet... They did tweet about this? Not sure. No, they didn't tweet about this. Quite sign. I have no idea how people actually found out about this, but... Uh, let's look at this, actually. Uh, Twitch... Go get locked? No, no... Uh, I want to see you. articles, chat rules for official Twitch. Oh, that's Twitch chat rules for Twitch channels. Hmm. All right, but there's a pretty old one. I'm trying to look for like articles, news, or something like that. I guess uh, Twitch is not being helpful. The only thing I don't like is not being able to find out what I need to find out. Any articles? Hmm. you think they have like news or something let's see over here moderation safety all topics getting started nope nothing like that Twitch news, maybe, perhaps. The blog. Latest from Twitch. Toxic security on patch notes. September, it's a VTuber takeover. What is this? Which featuring VTubers of both. Da, 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 da. Okay. Apparently, VTubers are trending on Twitch and they are promoting it. What is VTubing? Alright, blah blah blah. Let's get digital. Favorite. Da, da. Yeah, they're just talking. Saying, we are talking about VTubers. Alright. Okay. Good for them. Good for them. New charity to making charity streams easier. Yeah, oh my goodness. They really didn't talk about anything there. Oh, but they talk. Dude. Hey, Isaac. Objection, me. What are you objecting to? So they did mention this on August, talking about customizable tanks. Let's look at this. I'm actually interested in this one. TwitchCon Amsterdam, coming soon, lower payout minimum. Ah, lower payout? When did this happen? Well, apparently on July 12th. Uh, check, check. Right. Before I go into those other two articles, I'd, let's go on talking about host mode, right? We all know this, but somehow... Well, we, we know this somehow through word of mouth, really. I, I, I can't find this anywhere where Twitch should be. As in over, at least over here, right? Twitch should have announced where the removal of host mode. So if, if any of you are here, I would like to ask you, what do you think about host mode actually? Was it useful for you? Uh, 
for you to check out other uh, other streamers. Removing host mode doesn't really impact streamers though. Uh, I would say I won't say for certain about it, Isaac. It might not impact you. It might impact certain indiv individuals. A lot of these sort of features, right? Most of the time isn't how do you say you can't really see the practical uh the the practical use of it for 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 certain people but then could really mean something for other people right because how we use twitch is something that we don't think about how everyone each of us use twitch we don't think about it but then you have to re realize everyone uses Twitch for different reasons. How we approach Twitch, how we use, use its interface. We can't assume that everyone is using Twitch the same as ourselves. Unless, I, of course, you have like asked every other hundred uh, viewers, right? But yeah, uh, whether the host mode is useful for, for streamers, I'm uncertain. Because I'm uncertain how uh, most audience or the average audience uh, checks people out. At the same time, it could be a negative impact from different perspective, right? So let's try to understand what is host mode, right? We are, we are at this article, right? Which is supposed to be the one that talks, uh, tells you how host mode works. So here it says, Host mode is a channel feature available to all users across the site. Host mode gives all broadcasters ability to host another channel's live broadcast on his or her channel page without charging your chat, allowing for viewers to discover content you choose while interacting with you in your chat room. Any broadcasters can host another channel, and any channel can be hosted. It works just like any embedded player on another website except that embed is directly on twitch so that is what is host mode basically whenever someone is not streaming or they are streaming i can't say <laughs> i've i only i've i've only rated people i've also host uh, hosted people directly but uh, i never really see whether it is possible to host someone while streaming at the same time. That's one thing I don't know. I'm not, I'm not particularly sure about. Right. So here it says how to use host mode. I think we all know how to use host mode. Just type in the command, right? Or either use their like uh, stream manager to do it. Can transition to the channel. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So da, 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 da. up to three times in a given 30 minute period. So if the channel goes on, I can switch to hosting a different channel. Does that mean that viewers numbers will go to the hosted channel? By right, yes. Uh by right, yes. Uh the thing, but the thing is what views are calculated, right? I can't tell you for certain. There's no official confirmation on how views are calculated. I've tried to look it up, but a lot of it is from articles from news reports and i'm not so sure i should trust those since the viewers watching from the channel hosting yeah so you are technically watching because what are what i we have to question uh this right when we are hosting someone and we're watching someone how are we watching them right normally it's through like a player right Watching videos are through a player, like vid like YouTube. That you go to a particular website, particular page, to view that certain stream or certain video. So, if they are saying that it is embed embedded, embedded right, embedded player, they're saying it's embedded player, meaning to say, it's actually you're watching. You're watching the hosted channel instead of your own channel. You're watching a video on your own channel, if that makes sense, right? Because what is play being played is not your player. It's 
if let's say give a quick example right me myself uh you're watching me right now you're technically watching an embedded player right whatever however you want to call it a player to view my streams and i'm getting my views right i'm getting my views don't tell me my views <laughs> don't tell me my views uh but uh it should it should be the same if it's a different kind of the embedded player right regardless of where that um embedded player is from yep but you didn't send the fuels to the channel like rating does so that's that's weird right that's that's something i i don't really understand rating the difference between rating and hosting right rating is like um from what i understand is it only happens when you're streaming right it only happens when you're streaming and you rate someone else uh so of course i i went on to raid before i went on multiple raids before i know it, it made from from one channel it changes to another channel to the channel that's being rated so i understand that's how you get views right but what's let's say if a you i'm not rating i'm not streaming i just host someone would hosting actually be would the views on the host be a, counting towards the view count right that is something i uncertain which i think this page doesn't really tell you how it is done uh, whether it is counted or not right there's the auto host as well right whenever you're not uh streaming it, your channel will automatically host anyone that you have already put in as people that you will host for so there's that so this is our explanations right so they didn't say anything about oh wait they do have this right they do have this what's the difference between rating and hosting when you rate the channel, all the viewers currently watching on your channel page are redirected to the target channel page. This is different from host mode, which embeds the target channel's video directly on your channel page. Host mode does not redirect anyone currently on the page at the time of the host, keeping them on your page and in your chat. In terms of use cases, rating is a great thing to do at the end of each broadcast to send all of your viewers over to another channel to spread the love and hype. Uh, host mode is better used as a showcase tool for content you wish to share with your viewers while your stream is offline. For more information about rates, please see. Da -da 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 -da. Do host mode change what viewers see if my channel is embedded on an external site? No, activating host mode does not affect what viewers see on any embedded version of your broadcast. Who get credits for viewers when I activate host mode? The hosted channel gets full credit for all viewers while you are. What is? What does this mean? A hosted channel gets full credit for all viewers while you are in host mode. What what is credit? What full credit? Does this mean that the hosted channel gets views? Uh rate is still gonna be here, right? Yeah, rate is gonna still gonna be here. Rate is still gonna be here. It's just that there won't be hosting anymore. Meaning to say like um after you raid someone, right? After you raid someone and you stop streaming, your own channel, your own web, web your own page, your channel, you will not see who you have raided anymore. At least that is what I feel like, right? And I think that is the most likely possible possibility of um, the most practical use of a host, right? Whenever you raid someone, not everyone will be with the raid. Uh, so, when you just raid someone, and if let's say you do things like how I do, which I immediately tell people that I raided whoever I raided, then people would know, oh, I raided this person, I should go check them out. But if I don't do that, 
and I raided someone and someone who hasn't been watching my stream comes towards my channel. They would have no idea who I raided because the host would be not available. There won't be any host available anymore. Uh, the hosting mode won't be available. My channel will be just my own personal stuff only. So I think that would be a problem, right? That would be a problem. But again, I have no idea what is full getting full credit if I host someone. Could this mean viewers? I'm not sure. Yeah, so they don't really mention what this means. Uh, how does advertising work when I'm hosting mode? Viewers of the hosted channel will see advertising from the channel by in host mode. Exactly, if you are there on the channel's like page, like yeah. So it acts the same as if you were watching in that person's channel, except for maybe the chat function, right? The chat function will probably uh, limited to your own channel unless you click on the person's channel that is being hosted who gets the ad revenue from commercials shown in the hosted channel partners and affiliates receive advertising revenue if your channel is hosted and you are a partner that you continue to receive 100% of your revenue under your normal terms the hosting channel does not receive yeah so from all this what they are saying right it's actually really really good to host someone's channel right at least for the person that's being hosted because i'm if i'm the one that's hosting someone else i don't get any of this they are saying all the people who are being hosted are getting all of these benefits even the revenues ad revenues so i assume they are getting views as well right what if I ads turn off and I want to host the channel? Will the hosted channel ads be shown? Yes, the hosted channel ads will be shown. And the hosted channel will receive their normal share of everything. Yeah, we are pre-rolled. You may see. Can moderate one the channel? No, we are receive notices in chat every time someone. To brand view, you will only get notification of the channel. Can I manage all the hosting? We are hosted. Can I manage? Can I unhost? Yeah, so looking at this FAQ, right? So there's no really benefit for hosting a channel. There's no benefit for the person hosting a channel, but there's a lot of benefit for the person that is being hosted. So I don't know about you, but I like to help people. <laughs> I like to help people. I like to help my community. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to show who uh, exactly I I host, right? Uh, I, I have no problem with this. If people want to cancel me for people who I host with, uh, let, them, <laughs> let, them, let them cancel me, I guess. Uh, where is it? Uh... I think it's in affiliates. Affiliates. Uh, affiliate onboarding. No, 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 not this one. Affiliate agreement. Subscription. Community region leaderboards. Pre-roll. Where is it? Where is it? Human survey channel, featured content. Yeah, uh, over here. These are the people that I'm hosting. Okay. Including silly people in <laughs> for Isaac's understanding. And Waltz as well. Alright. In change payout options. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm helping all these people. These people, whenever they are streaming, right i auto host them i don't have to manually host host them so whenever people do come by my channel check me out and they do follow me i think once you follow me 
you will see only then you will see the people that I'm hosting. But once you do see them when I'm hosting, the views count, the ad revenue counts, and also they get more discoverability for them, right? They get more discoverability for them. Of course, you can always be the selfish guy and say, I have no benefit in doing this. Why am I doing it? All right? That is your discretion. Really. Whether you want to help people or not, it is up to your discretion. But the practical benefits is it is beneficial for uh, the entire community. It's beneficial for the entire community. Right? We, as long as we, small streamers, in this like a really competitive environment, right? Uh, we have to help each other. We have to help each other to, to grow, to to make sure we're we are safe, to make sure we are supporting each other one way or another. This is one of the ways. And for Twitch to remove this is kind of ridiculous, right? They're removing this. They, as you can see, they, I'll let you read what their reasons are, right? They're gonna they're giving you reasons for it, which I don't really agree on. What is changing with host mode and when it is happening? Host mode is going away on October 3rd, 2022. After this date, the host chat command and the host channel stream manager quick action will no longer be available. In addition, auto host will be changed to suggested channels in your channel settings. Why are you deprecating host mode? <laughs> We introduced host mode in 2014 to make it easy for streamers to give their viewers another stream to watch when they went offline. Since its launch, we've learned that streamers want to share their viewers with other streamers to help them grow and have introduced features to help you to do that. Right? We made the decision to replicate this feature because the experience it delivers to viewers doesn't match their expectations when they come to Twitch. Viewers want to interact with a streamer when they are live and host mode blocks this from happening. I think this is not true. Uh, preventing viewers from interacting with the streamer and watching also limits the streamer's growth potential because they are not able to build meaningful connections with those new viewers. Not true as well. I think this is really subjective. Yeah, I get your point. I didn't thought of hosting while you're not online. Wait, I'm confusion. <laughs> so, they are telling you Hosting is good on the first sentence. Then the next sentence, they are telling you hosting is bad. <laughs> right, let's really, really dissect what they are talking, right? We have time. We have time to talk about this. So they made this decision because it delivers to viewers. Uh, experience it delivers views doesn't match their expectations when they come to twitch this is so vague it could mean anything right what experience are they talking about <laughs> experience it delivers to views doesn't match your expectations when it comes to twitch when we are going when we go on twitch what are we expecting we are expecting to uh watch the streamers that we follow right we, we, we yeah second paragraph lost me we are supposed to we are we are so when we go to twitch when we go to twitch, what do we want to do we want to watch our streamers our favorite streamers we want to support our streamers right whatever they do so what's wrong with your favorite streamer supporting another streamer uh watching a video if let's say this is what they are trying to say why well, I'm interpreting my own uh, Twitch, quote unquote, Twitch experience, right? My Twitch experience is I want to watch whoever is uh, streaming that I followed, as well as if they are not on, maybe I will have the off chance of uh, going to their channel and seeing that they are actually hosting someone else. And I will, maybe I would be interested in what, they are, what this person is. My, uh, who, who this person is that is being hosted right what would my expectation not match though right how 
if my 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 if the streamers that I follow right are not online are not live, what is not being matched? I I am I already know the streamer that I follow isn't live, so how would that not make would it make my experience not matching? Unless I don't know. My brain can't 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 interpret this any other way. How how? How would Twitch company, this company, interpret the experience? What what is the actual experience I have to experience? <laughs> Why am I supposed to experience when I'm using Twitch? If not this, right? <laughs> uh so then okay, they go on to say viewers want to interact with the streamer when they are live and host mode blocks this from happening. I'm sorry, what? They're saying whenever someone hosts, I am not streaming? I can't stream when I'm hosting? That's, that's absolutely wrong though, right? Viewers want to interact with the streamer when they're live and host mode blocks this from happening. How is it blocking though? I only host when I'm not live, right? Or when I raided someone. They didn't know lurkers exist. <laughs> so this sentence is absolutely bonkers to me. I know why how is this blocking Oh man, I, my brain, it's, it's, it's stopped functioning. I'm still lost on the second paragraph. This is completely wrong from, from a very factual point, right? Because they are saying host, host mode blocks uh, viewers from watching a streamer when they are live. Right now I'm live, right? I'm not crazy, right? Right now I'm live. Am I hosting anyone? Right now. Am I hosting anyone? Are you watching other people right now? <laughs> While I'm streaming. <laughs> right? This is beyond beyond any reason why they put this in, in such a they put it in such a way. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think what Twitch, what how this makes sense for them but I, I can't and I'm a lawyer <laughs> I'm a lawyer I'm supposed to have, be able to interpret a sentence in multiple different ways but no this this sentence I can't do anything with it <laughs> viewers want to interact with the stream when they're live and host modes block this from happening can you interact with me right now you're interacting with me right now Okay, never mind. Let's let's move on. Last sentence. <laughs> so then they went on to say, preventing viewers from interacting with the streamer they're watching somehow, right? Somehow also limits also limits a streamer's growth potential because they are not able to build meaningful connections with those new viewers. Only one way I can interpret this for Twitch, right, is if someone doesn't follow me. If someone doesn't follow me, I, I think there's only one way to interpret this. But I'm not sure. As far as I remember, the, the times when I see someone being hosted is only when I follow that person. Because I've done this before. I went to a person's channel. I haven't followed them. I just looked through their content and uh, like uh, their descriptions or whatever and said, mm, yeah, nice. I'll follow. And once I follow, then I'll only see the person that they are hosting. If, they are, if there's someone that's live right now, they are hosting, they, it will appear. That is how I 
that is how my experience is with host mode. When people are offline, and I'm not when when I'm not following them, okay. So I'm not sure it is the same now or not. But I've done that recently. I'm pretty sure it hasn't changed since now they are going to remove this now uh, very soon in less than a month. So again. How is that, if, if that is how it works, how is it preventing viewers from interacting with the streamer they are watching? Uh, trying to understand this, watching. They are saying watching. Is it watching live or just watching the channel and the channel's VOD? Have to be very specific you know you don't you can't just say this and then assume we know what you're talking about what are you saying when you're saying watching the streamer watching what watching their stream or their vod's because uh, as far as in can i remember you twitch refers to all of us as streamers not like a twitchers or something like that or youtubers <laughs> even worse so, yeah, still contradictory, Con contradictory, contradicting, that doesn't make sense. And also here it says limits streamers growth potential because they are not able to build any meaningful connections with those new viewers. So I want to ask Twitch, how exactly do we build connections with viewers? Right? Uh, let me change that music. It's, it's looping, looping a lot. Oh, nice music. <laughs> so, Isaac, well, so anyone that's here, how do we make, how is the connection we've made with each other? How do we build this connection with each other? How do we have this relationship with you and I? Right. Do we uh, interact with each other when I'm not live? Do we interact with each other when you're not live? Or when you're not talking about uh, other streamers with uh, my audience, right? With my community. Well, we, I would only interact with you all if I'm streaming, right? If I'm not streaming, I will be interacting with you in other ways, right? To build a meaningful connection, as they say, right? Build a meaningful connection. And to build meaningful connections, you have to communicate with each other, right? From my understanding, Twitch wants viewers to chat with streamers. But host mode blocked that because you won't be able to chat in the hosted channel or giving bits. Or viewers in hosting channel can do that. That's... That's a really weird reason to give. Who's... Let me, let me go back to here, right? The first paragraph. What was their goal? To give viewers another stream to watch when they're offline. What was the goal of the hosting? They're contradicting... If you're, you're saying that's the reason, then it's contradictory to this one. Because they... Gave this feature because their objective was to provide you to have other people have other options to have other streamers to watch, not to watch us, not just to watch the hoster, the host. Sorry, <laughs> there's no such thing as hoster. So, so they are, are they telling us we shouldn't be. Helping other people then? Is that what they are trying to say? If that is what they are trying to say, then yeah, I guess you don't want us to help other people. You just want everyone to focus on ourselves. To out to be a bit more selfish. Okay. That is very unethical, but why? <laughs> why, right? Why are you doing that? 
I think I'm gonna take a nap right now, right? <laughs> Did it fry your brain, Malt? Uh, yeah, it, I, it kind of fried my brain as well, looking at this. But, uh, yeah. Post mode blocks that because you won't be able to chat in the hosted channel giving bits or viewing, viewers in hosting channel can do that. Or viewers in hosting channel can do that. Uh, when you're hosting, when you're hosting someone, you can't interact with anyone until you click onto their channel. As far as I know, uh, if you don't click on their channel, your chat, the chat would still be, for example, if I'm hosting someone, that chat would still be my chat. Uh, box chat room as it has happened right i think but that that is right if the purpose is to support uh the purpose is just to focus on yourself on the streamer and not a, an, another person then yes that is the purpose of the host uh, removing the host mode the, the factual reason of removing the host mode. So if let's say business perspective, what good does it do for uh, for Twitch to remove this, right? I've heard, I've seen reasons behind it, uh, speculations at least. One of it is it reduces their resources. Somehow people are speculating or thinking, claiming that host mode requires a chunk of resources from Twitch. That is why they are doing it. Uh, and because host mode is mostly used by part, uh, not partners, non-partners, used by affiliates, used by people who are not affiliates, I think. Uh, because I think host mode is not limited to affiliates and partners. So they are being used by people who are not, who are not providing revenue to Twitch and as well as um, affiliates when most affiliates are not providing enough revenue to Twitch so that's why people are saying this is a really uh, this this decision to remove host mode is to target us the small community the small streamers right the, the streamers that really needs this sort of a uh additional support to in order to grow in order to uh get discoverability that get it uh get us known get us found by other by new people right this is one way right from one community to another community trying to coexist with each other but yeah they're saying because this takes quote-unquote resources i'm not sure what resources mean meaning could be like uh, they want to remove like the algorithms the systems behind post mode uh so that they don't have to pay for these things that aren't getting them enough revenue that's the only thing i can think of right that's the only i would say this why i'm like particularly picking up on this reasons is because i think that makes the most sense than rather what twitch has officially provided as a reason over here right they are not doing this for us as far as i can see they are not doing this for us no matter how you want to uh, sugarcoat it, right? You are removing a feature and not doing anything else. You're not replacing anything to fill this gap, so to speak. Because most decision in this big platform is not for us, but for mostly for them. Just like YouTube removing the dislike count. Yes, yes, sort of. Uh, a lot of it has always been like that and it is becoming worse right 
it's becoming worse. Uh, every small thing that has happening is because there's no way for us to fight back. No way for no way us for us to uh, influence anything. Because we are too small, we do not really have any influence in the sense of uh, affecting their profits. In fact, in fact, affecting all of these big platforms' profits. They only listen to, they only be swayed if their finance has been affected or have risk of being affected. That's why they are doing all these things to cut costs, right? One thing is to cut costs and to increase profit, all of that is their goal. I understand that you understand that, right? It's just infuriating when companies literally say things like this like we are like uh we have no idea how the real world real world works right yeah from a perspective it doesn't hurt at all to maintain the hosting mode uh yeah there's from our perspective it's nothing but you can really just say we want to cut cost Right? Don't have to sugarcoat it. It's not like uh, it's gonna f be bad for the reputation or anything. It's already bad by doing this. <laughs> Don't have to say it's for our own good. It's This is gaslighting. This is really gaslighting. <laughs> uh, if, we were, if Trisha and I were in a relationship, this is like me. This, this is for your own good. <clears throat> Be, uh, uh, as they beat up your bot, beat you up. This is for your own good. This is good for you. <laughs> Damn, man. Twitch. This is a toxic relationship. Uh, either that or like remo removing your laptop. <laughs> like, you, you did, like you did something bad, they remove your laptop. Gr or ground you or something like that. <laughs> this is for your own good. I... I you shouldn't be playing with this, right? A PS4? No. It's for your own good. I'm removing this from you. PS4 uh, encourages violence or something like that. You shouldn't have it. You should go out, go out and have uh, touch grass. As they say, touch grass. Uh, breathe the fresh air outside. I guess Twitch is just an Asian parent. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Ah, damn it, damn these things. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so conclusion is host mode, true and true, from what we can see, it, from this page itself, like, it, it, it's nothing bad about it. Well, we can tell, nothing bad about host mode. It's only beneficial to other people. It's, it's like, giving you an option to to be a good person without doing anything uh without doing anything extra right when you host someone you can people can new people who goes to your new people who goes to your channel can still view your channel see what you are all about see your description see your vod's see your clips highlights and any other links that you have or maybe your introductory video as well it's only if someone follows you that you start to see people's host hosted channels so i have no idea why twitch here is saying it blocks people from making quote-unquote meaningful connections with you uh stopping you from interacting uh, with the streamer and be between the streamer and the viewers all that is bullshit <laughs> all that's bullshit and it doesn't it's not even convincing bullshit right anyways that's for host mode i would like to <laughs> look at this uh this two actually introducing customizer customizable tags and more of them so this one i would say 
is because of the controversy behind it it happened because of the controversy behind mislabeling of tags so a couple months ago i think more than a couple months ago uh, maybe four or five months ago uh there was this thing where vtubers are becoming more popular right i think it's still becoming it's still being it's still trending but because it's trending on twitch a lot of non vtubers are using the vtuber tags because you know more people are looking up vtubers so they are quote unquote, uh, quote unquote getting into the bandwagon okay but it's all speculations maybe they just having a hard time to maintain the hosting mode or hosting mode causing bugs in other parts saying the truth of this part we only say that twitch is incapable incompetent uh, maybe maybe uh but i won't say that they have like i think we just saw something like a uh, patch notes or something like that and they have a twitter account talking about maintenance and stuff they have problems they have problems they are not perfect they, are, they have problems they have shown that told people they are having some technical issues or what so if it's just a technical issue that they can't solve maybe maybe all right maybe a big maybe to say that they want they want to show that they don't want to be incompetent but they are already incompetent in doing in trying to handle the HR or trying to maintain a positive uh, outlook on this decision. But yeah, uh, so this thing, a uh, lot of non VTubers were using VTuber tags, and I think still are, still now, still is, because they did something that didn't help with the problem. <laughs> So, okay, let's read this. In May 2021, we added more than 350 tags to Twitch with two objectives. To help streamers describe themselves and their content and to help viewers find communities they are interested in. Your response was positive, as we could have imagined, but even 350 more tags can't begin to cover the diversity range and creativity of the community. So today, we're handling the controls over to you with the customizable tags. Yep, this is just them saying... They are not addressing this directly to the mis mislabeling of tags problem. But they are kind of saying that, right? Uh, they are saying that, at least for this last sentence, this seems to imply that, you know what? We're not going to enforce these tags. You do, you do, you make your own customizable tags. So it won't be our fault that people are using the wrong tags. <laughs> This is it, yeah? I would say this is a pretty good interpretation of why they are doing this. <laughs> not my problem anymore. I'm not the one uh, making the tags. You are the ones making the tags, so I am not responsible. <laughs> so, there's that. There's that. But, kind of makes my... Uh, I had a video on this, actually, talking about this. Uh, why it is not good for people to use the tags and how what would Twitch do about it? So this is the update to my video. Twitch is not gonna do anything about it. <laughs> Twitch is not gonna do anything about it, <laughs> absolutely at all because of this. Right? The community guidelines for this one remains the same, but it is very difficult to put the blame on Twitch for not enforcing the the community guidelines rules now. Because they are not the ones who define the tags anymore. Previously, all 350 tags have a definition for them at a, in a page, all of it. I also mentioned that in my video. Now it's a, it's it's obsolete. Almost everything in my video is obsolete. Any <laughs> that's just why, right? They don't want to hold responsibility doing this because for a lot of reasons, which I already mentioned in my video. It's because they. A lot of top streamers mislabel their tags, right? If there was something like uh, some, as uh, as Malaysians say, 
uh, I mentioned Chinese say Ako Amao. Uh, basically, if you are just a cat or just a ran random cat or a random dog, nobody uh, uh, people would enforce it if it becomes a problem. But because the people that are doing this are like providing Twitch hundreds of thousands uh, of revenue per month are doing it of course they won't do something they won't even they won't care about this even if the top streamers ridicule us or uh, how do you say be mock us uh, mock our mock the video mock mock the video community which has happened to a lot of uh, which has happened right they are talking they are simply saying things that like trying to say they are VTubers, they identify as VT VTubers, like it's some sort of gender or something like that. Saying something really mean like that. But yeah. Not good enough. Not not bad enough, so to speak. Not bad enough for Twitch. And even though there are like thousands of VTubers making noise on this, including myself. Uh, nope. This is the result. This is the result of our fruits of labor but yeah i think i don't really need to read all of this this is already isn't is enough to tell me why twitch did why twitch gave this customizable tags right describe your da -da -da, whatever you're into da -da 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 -da. now you have the power to show off your personality da -da 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 -da. Add twice as many tags, discover streamers more easily. We'll highlight channels that are using the tag. Of course, all tags must follow our community guidelines. Right, they have to put in this, but I don't think they... They actually have something like this, right? Maybe for some serious stuff, right? For some serious stuff, like, because you have, we are given the, the discretion to make our own customizable tags, we could literally like write any controversial stuff or discriminative stuff or hateful stuff. So yeah, those will be maintained. Will be will be enforced probably. As I say, probably because this enforcement thing is not equal. So yeah, that's that. I the community guidelines haven't changed. I've seen it. All right, let's go into that. Uh, respect Twitch, blah, 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 blah. Wait, what is this? You should only create tags, or oh, yeah, you should only create tags that adhere to the, 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 the example. The, 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 the. There's a prohibited game, and the of another vulgarity, commonly abused terms, severe abuse of tags, submission, including severe policy, permission to be dismissed. Yeah, nothing about mislabeling of tags in this new quote unquote new rules on customizable tags. So let's go back to the one that we I referred when I was researching on this. Uh which is here content labeling. So very, very short. Uh, I would say it's because they don't really care about this. You are expected to accurately label your content to the best of your ability. When choosing a category or tag, please choose whichever best describes your content. Deliberate or extensive misuse of titles, games, categories, or other metadata are prohibited. Right? This is the only thing I can try to say Twitch might use this to enforce misuse or mislabeling of tags. But unfortunately, there's not much to do now. Because previously tags have a list of definition. Now the tags do not have a list of definition. So if someone uses a VTuber tag, we do not have a precedent. We do not know what Twitch's official definition for VTubers are. Only they know, and 
they can change it whenever they like what the definition is and whether to should actually uh, look into this sort of a cases I highly doubt it unfortunately uh, so at the end they say we're excited to see all of the creative tags you come up with this is just the beginning in the future tags will play a more prominent role in creating discovery opportunities for streamers for example by integrating your tags itself to shaft creation on a home page we can quickly respond to organic movements within our community and amplify them as they are appear happening. So give tags a try today and be seen on Twitch. You can learn more about tags by checking out Guide to Tags help article. Right. So nothing addressing the problem of mislabeling tags. So that's that. Unfortunately for us, problems exist there. So <sighs> oh else? Life is life. Then we had something here, a lower payout minimum coming soon. Oh ho ho! So you earn it and we want you to get it to your wallet. Now creators can see the fruits of their hard work with a lower 50 minimum payout threshold. Ooh. Down from $100. This phase rollout will be available to partners and freelancers as we introduce the new minimum country by country. <gasps> country by country. God damn it. Just starting July 15. Available in Argentina, Italy. Japan, Mexico, Spain, and Taiwan. Okay. 70,000. We understand how can they do that. This level is on the internet. We then grab and we already have the money. More money is rolling to account. What's the change? Face out. Okay, nothing about this. Okay. We just have the news that they have lowered down the payment to 50. But I guess. We'll have to wait if this is going to be a, like applicable to everyone. This lower fifty dollars minimum is available through our most popular payment methods: blah blah blah, direct deposit, local bank, PayPal, and check. Okay. We still processing wire transfer files. We still require a hundred minimum due to transfer fees. Okay. If you selected to hold your pay. Uh, we continue to hold your earnings until you receive. That's kind of weird. Okay, good thing I read this. Processing wire transfer payouts will still require 100 million due to transfer fees. If you selected to hold your payout, you will continue to hold your earnings until you are ready to see them and change your selection. For more details about confirming or updating your payout information, check out the help article. Oh, okay. Uh, so, wire transfer. I'm not sure what tra wire transfer it is, but probably different than this one, whatever the other methods are. So, people who do use wire transfer, it's going to be $100 still. But this is something I have to check out, the payout. Actually, soon. Actually, so I'm I'm getting close to getting my first paycheck after after how long? <laughs> after eight months, almost eight months, or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight months. It has been eight months since I've been doing this. It's good, it's good. Alright, uh, that's everything about Twitch, I guess. Interesting to know, interesting to know. Alright, that's... Uh, I think we're done, we're done. Uh, so, I think it's a good time to end the stream. I like I like <laughs> some for some reason I like playing Great Ace Attorney music while I'm doing this. It really gives him gives myself into the mood of like justice. Reading documents, legal documents, it's good. So anyhow, 
thank you so much for watching everyone i hope it was insightful uh still if you have any questions feel free to ask me all right over here over on twitter over on my discord channel or anywhere you like so yeah i do have a discord channel i do provide uh some legal assistance to people who wants them over on uh on my on my server there are channels specifically to help anyone who has some issues whether they are um it is employment laws or copyright laws or anything in general you can go over there and i can talk to you more in detail uh yeah so i hope that was good it was good for me so in any case as always whenever i end the stream i will be raiding someone which should be let's look through Okay, um, let's see, we can read. We will read. We'll read Rika. <laughs> Why not, right? Unless she's gonna be stopping. Let's see. She's still playing. She's still playing. Let's go over to her, alright? Let's go over to her. So anyone who doesn't know Raika, Raika is a VTuber, a Apple demon. Shout out to her. And very lovely, one of my favorite VTubers. And it's very rare, very, not very rare. Yeah, kind of rare for her to be streaming because of uh, circums uh, um, circumstances. Yeah, go give her... Go give her a watch, a view, or anything. Anything that will help her. Alright. So, take care. Stay hopeful. But be critical, alright? Tomorrow, I'll be playing a horror game! Not sure how horrible it is. Not the bad kind of horrible, at least. But it's Ghostwire. I'll be playing Ghostwire. Uh, uh, I'm not really certain what it is all about, but I'm gonna find out soon. Anyways, oh, read message. And and all the ones that are not subscribed. All right. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you for all your support. Hope to do this next week yeah i'm hoping to do this next week All right university before college we have no official or proper education on any legal subjects i have to take a law subject one semester but my main is science i'm like what the heck i'm not i know nothing <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You can't just have a semester to learn a subject that is, it involves everything. It involves type of law that we have to be, we have to follow, we have to comply with, or we, uh, un, uh, how do you say, unawarely not complying with because we do not know about the laws, right? We don't know how to find the laws. We do not know how to check for it. We don't know whether we are breaching the law. If other people are breaching the law or not, most of us are just doing what everyone else is doing. That is how society seems to be working. A lot of things involve laws. Once we become adults, once we start working, we're supposed to automatically know what laws applies to us. We are supposed to, when we go look for jobs, we are supposed to know what our employment rights are. That's not possible. Nobody taught you. Nobody taught you where to look for employment laws. Nobody taught you where to, how to do your taxes and what tax law is, is applicable to you. There's nobody told you how government works, uh, how, why, why you are voting for, what, how are government ma making laws? All that stuff, nobody has taught you. It's all has been like by way of words only. Uh, would you be able to research on how you operate, how our government operate in its truer sense? 
impossible, at least without some type of uh, legal skills or legal knowledge, right? We learn no life, we learn no life skills in university. Yes, we learn nothing until university, and university depends on what you have picked. It's it's crazy how the world works, and we're supposed to, and at that age we're supposed to be able to drink, we're supposed to be able to vote, we're supposed to be able to do all adult things, <laughs> smoke or whatever. It's, it's it's basically a formula or a recipe. We're literally still kids or still children. All this boils down to me saying is. Right now, this is what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to get people to start thinking that legal skills and knowledge is actually a basic adult skill that everyone should have, right? Like this right now, knowing how and what an agreement is, why is it important, and how an agreement is drafted, right? I would say this is a very basic skill.